those who don't wonder about the contingency of their existence and the contingency of the world's existence are mentally deficient. Why is there something rather than nothing at all? I mean, this is the super ultimate why question. How would you describe yourself? There's nothing. There's no self. How would you like to be remembered? Doesn't matter. I'm just a simple man trying to make my way in the universe. What were your dreams as a child? Nightmares. No power in the verse can stop me. What's going on guys? My name is Elden Nero and welcome to episode 122 of my world famous podcast, The Midnight Hour. I have a great show lined up for you today, but before I get into that, I just want to say a huge thanks for the response on my 2019 episode. Uh, there were some lovely comments that just kind of gave me the energy to go and produce this episode that you're about to hear and hopefully many more throughout the year. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but sure. What can you do? Another thing that I wanted to say is that I've created a Spotify playlist containing songs used in this podcast, be it at the beginning or the end of each episode. It doesn't include every single song ever used because some of them aren't even on Spotify. And if you're confused about hearing certain songs and you're not sure which episode they were on, sometimes I use different songs on SoundCloud than I do on YouTube. So you might like not even have heard some of them. Uh, some of them are in episodes that have been permanently removed from uh, the universe so um, you probably never heard them. I also made a Spotify playlist containing a selection of songs from the albums I spoke about in my top 10 albums of my life episode so I'll leave a link to both of those things in the description and hopefully you can go check them out if you think that that's the type of thing that might float your boat. Um, also if you want to suggest guests for the show I think feel like I have the kind of fire in my belly where I'd be happy to reach out to people I haven't spoken to before. Um, today's guest, for example, is someone who's never been on the show before, and I still think, despite that, it'll feel like a vintage Midnight Hour episode for all of you longtime listeners out there. If you are suggesting a guest, please keep the suggestion sensible. I do not have the capacity to get PewDiePie or John Lennon or anyone of that ilk, um, especially not John Lennon because he's dead. I don't know why I said him. All right. So today's guest is by far one of the most requested guests of all time. If you go to the comments section of episode one, you'll actually see people requesting that I secure this guest. They are one of the greatest career mode YouTubers of all time, boasting over 200,000 subscribers and one of the hardest working and most consistent content producers in the biz. We talk about everything in a typically meandering and tangent filled midnight hour conversation from YouTube to conspiracy theories, to the effect of social media on the brain, to what I did last Friday night. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in Midnight Hour history, please welcome Docs. Welcome to the Midnight Hour, Docs. How does it feel to be here? Uh, very, very pleased. Very, very long overdue, I must say. I've been waiting for this moment for years, and uh, I can't wait to dive into all the topics we've got planned to discuss today. Same, so, yeah. yeah of most importantly, uh, I can go back to all fucking, like, I don't know, 500 of your fans who message me and fucking tweet me, like, when is Docs coming on the Midnight Hour? I can be like, right now, bitches. So, yeah, that's just that's just me on 499 different accounts, actually, but, you know. Like... Yeah, well, that's true, but you, you, gotta, you gotta stay committed to these things, life goals and stuff like that. Um, Absolutely. So, um, I guess the most important question... Uh, to start with is uh, when is the next career mode <laughs> right uh, it should be at 4pm UK time on a weekday um, and on the weekends it's like 10 or 11 in the morning the first one and the second one's after the Premier League football no you misunderstood me I mean when are you starting a whole new career mode with specifically just the team that I want you to manage and signing the players uh, that I want you to sign uh probably within like a week because i'm so desperate for your approval so. <laughs> isn't it mad when people comment stuff like um 
like every single video there'll be one guy who'll comment the same fucking thing and like he will not be happy until you bring fucking Kaylini to Wigan and, and like yep. it, it he just never ever gives up on that goal and you're like should I just fucking do it will I get him to stop and like what the, what are his expectations for the player once he joins the club like am I gonna win the Champions League immediately I don't know mm, and then you, then then you sign him and then he stops watching afterwards which yeah really happens he goes that straight afterwards yeah, that was a waste of time. <laughs> do you um do you have any idea whatsoever about like uh, audience retention? Because I haven't done career mode in a very long time, but um my memory of it is episode one absolutely bangs no matter what it is. Um episode two does pretty well. Episode three is decent. Episode four is good, and then episode five is like this is your reality for the rest. of This is what it is. They're not all gonna be fucking forty five thousand views like the first one. All right, this one is. You're at a solid 4,000, and this is how it will stay until you do episode one of the next one that comes after. That is pretty much exactly right on the money. That's how it is. Like You get like an amazing amount of views on the first couple always, and then after like five or six episodes, you realize that your audience is actually going to be about five or 6,000 views, and you're going to get any more than that. Like this is, this is your life now for the rest of the series, so either make a new one or accept it. That's, yeah, it makes that's me... as far as it goes. I remember I had one series where it was... Uh... I was like, oh, I was the Everton one, and then I went to Monaco, and so when I went to Monaco, I made it like it was a new one, like, here's episode one of Monaco, but it was actually a continuation. Um, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good trick. You can, uh, you can take that one if you want. I've Thanks, been mate, doing cheers. that for cheers. seven years now. Yeah. So. <laughs> Thanks for that, I'll, um, I'll keep it in mind. So you, uh, you upload daily still? Yeah, I do, yeah. and, uh, quadruples on the weekend. Two on Saturday, two on Sunday. That's, that's the general idea, yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. I've been um I've been long considering, right? Uh this is actually serious. I've been long considering sneakily downloading um FIFA I don't know, twenty two. I don't know, I haven't played them for a while, I'm not sure what one we're on now. Um Yeah, normally it's thinking... the, the year we're going into, so it would be FIFA twenty. I don't think they've changed that in a while, so Yeah. I remember <laughs> once I was in a I was in a Skype call or a Discord call maybe with um all of the top people in the in the biz, right? You all know who they are. I'm not gonna say names, I'm not gonna say the person who said this. But one of them was like making this argument that we couldn't possibly make plans for the upcoming FIFA game because EA hadn't announced it yet. Uh. So we didn't even know that there was gonna be one. Like Genius. Uh, yeah, it was really something. Um, <clears throat> yeah, no, but I was thinking about doing a fucking, uh, doing like a, a midnight series, you know, of like, here's um, here's a career mode of a, a lower league fucking thing. It, it goes up at midnight every single night or like 5 a.m. or something like that. So that like, you know, none of the people who pay attention to um, like... No, I don't know what I'm trying to say. But, like, people would find it and watch it, but it, it might be, like, a whole new audience, and, like, the people who think that I've given up wouldn't know that I did it, and other people might just rediscover me or discover me for the first time. And um, it could be, like, a sneaky little guerrilla career mode series, you know? Yeah, so long as you enjoy it. I mean, that's the most important thing, because the fact is you're not going to get that many views if you start at, like, 5 in the morning. Uh, mm -hmm. um, but... Uh... Yeah, the enjoyment's the most important thing. As you can tell, I'm still thrilled at what I do, man. Like, I love it. And yeah, yeah, we both know I'm not going to enjoy it, so there's no fucking. <laughs> uh, I haven't even fucking downloaded. I hadn't even bought uh, the last tree. I think it is now. Oh yeah. No, we're not missing much. I wasn't going to um like because obviously I like quit YouTube for like two months in the summer. Yeah. I I wasn't going to download FIFA 20. Like it was going to be my first in like. I don't know how many years without buying it, but also I came back to YouTube so far on that as well. Um, like the game, like I, I will try and defend it as long as I can because I feel like I have an obligation to. Um, mm -hmm. But the, the fact is, like, a career mode is just like a fucking shell of where it used to be, and it is just so fucking annoying that people still act as if EA are going to one day turn around and make an online career mode or whatever. <laughs> Like, it's just so... Like, what do you expect? Ultimate Team makes them billions of dollars year-round. Career mm -hmm. Mode makes them a bit of money as a selling point. Mm -hmm. 
You know, there is a huge difference between the two, and you can't expect, like, EA are a company, like, they're not going to just appease a minority, because that's what Karima players are, they're a minority, most people play on the team. Um, they're not just going to appease the fans of that game mode just because they want to get back in their good books. They've been, like, the worst, like, uh, customer support company for years and years and years. Do you really think now they're going to make an effort? Like, of course they're not. It's, it's baffling to me that people still think that they're going to really improve the game. There are fucking bugs that have been in the game for like six years that would take yeah. about ten minutes to fix. Yeah. If they really cared, they would at least start with that shit. You know, I mean, like, you can't. I I would record. I say I record about two to three hours worth of gameplay every day. Within about half an hour, I've already seen about four bugs, and that's not even an exaggeration. Like, the, it might um, even be minor things. But do passes still, bugs still do passes still default to the offside player? Uh, yeah. I mean, you're not gonna ever get rid of that. That bugs is too complicated. I mean, you know, it's just the gameplay is just fucking. I mean, actually, to be fair, having said that, they've just changed the patch uh, on the patch the ultimate difficulty on 1.13. Um, the ultimate difficulty is supposed to be like the hardest difficulty of all. Yet before the patch, I was thrashing teams like five, six nil, like easily, and it's like this is just so dull. But since the patch, they have improved the AI quite significantly. But the thing that annoys me is like part of the way they've made it harder is by putting you at a disadvantage and it's like that shouldn't be how it should be in order to get you you know the incentive to be better like not by yeah. fucking things up intentionally for you like you know your passes go like miles astray with your central midfielder yet the AI are playing fucking 70 yard diagonal free balls with the goalkeeper like how is that like going to incentivize you to be a better player it's just it's gonna fuck you over. Like, how yeah, how he, do we make people had... want to get better? Let's destroy the integrity of our own match engine. Yeah. <laughs> they have this really annoying thing as well, where they go from one extreme to the other. Like last year, like crosses were just the most OP thing. You would score, and I'm not even exaggerating. Half your crosses, you whip the ball in with a right back with 29 for his crossing stat, and it's literally like the fucking David Beckham s cross every time. Like it's just the trajectory, the bend is like fucking uh, Carlos in his crime it goes right to your striker's header and it's it's a goal one time out of three uh, they go from that extreme then to the the patch where they say oh we fixed crossing now and now you can't score a single cross it's like they go from one extreme to the other mm -hmm. and it's just so fucking annoying how they just can't understand that like the happy balance and the medium is what we should be you know what they should be aspiring to get for their game yeah instead it's like one thing's overpowered and their fix is just to stop it from ever working again yeah, FIFA 12 finesse shots. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And then it's and then that 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 for them is a resolved issue, right? Resolved. We don't need to we don't need to go back on that ever again. That's done now. It's, it's just... mad. Like um, I think like FIFA 11 or FIFA 12 or something had like a I don't know 1,000 five star skillers in it, mm -hmm. and then FIFA 14 had like 17 <laughs> five star skillers. And it's like, wait, wait, wait. Now hold on, because Anthony Stokes had five star skills in the last game, but. <laughs> Fucking Cristiano Ronaldo only has four stars in yeah. this one. That's... The way they, the way they like give players like weak foot ranks and start skill moves is so arbitrary as well. And the thing that really pisses me off with is with the youth players, like you'll get a striker with like fifty for finishing, but yet seventy for marking with a one star weak foot and five star skill moves, and it's yeah. just so trivial. And it's like it totally breaks the fucking immersion. Like I swear, one of my right backs is the highest finishing stat than one of my strikers, and it's like. What is going on here? And like, you know, the fucking amount of times you'll get a player out of the academy with like low high work rates who's a striker and it's like, what? Like you realise it's just randomized. That's all it is. There's no thought, mm -hmm. it's just random. And it's just so they have no care for their game mode whatsoever. And it's just I don't know, it's so hard to defend it these days, man. Like it's just, they've they've broken me down over the years. <laughs> like Yeah, I know. It's um I, I love uh I love like uh, it's really good for me not being like invested in it anymore, right? Like I don't really give a shit. Um, but it's funny when like you know you know for example when they brought women into the game and it was like now you can play as women and people are like um, the way that they hide the way they actually feel by saying something else they're like oh instead of bringing women in the game they should have fixed career mode. It's, <laughs> it's like hold on like you understand that bringing women into the game is literally a fucking skin change mod. <laughs> That's all it yeah, is. I like... know.
it's uh it's it probably took them like fucking one hour <laughs> to, yeah, to get exactly. that together people were like oh they could have fixed this ongoing issue that has been in the game since the dawn of its existence yeah. they could have fixed that but instead women <laughs> it's like it's, it's like i think it's one or the other it's like the ea technician or whatever like the ea like graphic not graphic like the, the guy that codes the game or whatever is like luke well, from auto glass repairs <laughs> well i could fix all the issues in career mode or i could add women but i can only yeah. do one like they think that that's how it actually is like yeah. why is he not fixing like why is he not making a whole online career mode yet instead of bringing women into the game it's like it's not like he's just doing one or the other like yeah. uh, i don't know i don't know it's 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 weird how people still have this like obsession that like career mode is you know at one point gonna like explode into life once again and they're gonna like make it the most amazing game mode ever it's like Mm-hmm. give it up man it's over i like, accept it ultimate team is the cash cow and that's never going to change from here on out like the only way it would ever change is if ultimate team stopped becoming profitable and i can't see that happening anytime soon so it's how it is um i was gonna like why don't you play ultimate team more is it like a you um, don't enjoy it or you're you're just now found like fundamentally a career mode youtuber so it would basically constitute like a, a fucking i don't know like career change kind of thing if you were to do that or it's like a little from column a a little from column b like for starters mm-hmm. i think ultimate team has just got too competitive like it's got to a point now where like, like it because a lot of, what people don't realize is that they might not have played ultimate team back at its foundations but they first came in as a downloadable content and um it was a bit of a novelty game game mode like you had your own virtual pro like you could deck him out with bandanas and shit and there was actually a time where like you could uh, have special cards where like you could affect the game in place so like goal kicks would like balloon like 50 yards in the air or whatever like people forget ultimate team began as a bit of a novelty you know it was a bit mm-hmm. of fun and uh, there was the collection book if, if anyone remembers that like you could yeah, like, put cards in, like, a book and stuff and that to me was ultimate team was really fun i loved that shit i thought that was brilliant it was really it was like far out there it was it was really, really bizarre, but fun. Uh, it was more like a, um, it was more like a, uh, it's, it's really ironic how it's changed over the years. And yes, you will find out over the course of this podcast, I don't know the definition of irony, but, um, which might be ironic itself. I don't how know. ironic. Yeah, exactly. That might be ironic or it might be satirical. I don't know. But, um, but yeah, like Ultimate Team started off as this like bit of a, not a joke, but like a kind of like arcade way of playing the game for a bit of fun. But mm-hmm. now it's flipped completely and now it's so serious and they've just, ballooned it with like one to watch cards and icons and legends and shit um and to me it's got to a point now where i just don't enjoy playing it because i just I, I'll, I'll play like a few, few games and then i'll come up across, across some massive cunt that has clearly spent a shit ton on fifa points to get his team and every single goal he's shushing me down the camera and it's like mate i just want to like you know I mean? life is stressful enough let me just have a few fun games of fifa without making <laughs> up a sweat trying to grind out a point to secure safety in division for like i don't want to be challenged like that i just want to have fun with it but Mm -hmm. also on the opposite side of the coin um my audience have got to a point now where like they just expect offline gaming and i i prefer playing online i do but if there's a weird subsection of the career mode community you think anyone that plays ultimate team is like a a devil and like suddenly if you start playing ultimate team you're contributing to the downfall of career mode as if like ea are checking my youtube channel to find out whether i'm still keeping the career mode audience off flow yeah. like they, they seem to think they, they think like if i do some ultimate team videos first of all they'll use the term sellout when they don't even know what the term sellout even means and and then they'll you know start saying stuff like oh you know you're the reason why career mode is dying because you're not playing anymore it's like sorry i'm not responsible for keeping career mode afloat nor does my you know my efforts have any kind of meaningful impact whatsoever mm-hmm. and it's just weird how like there's a portion of like career mode fans out there that like just hate ultimate team with such venom and passion that if you ever associate yourself with it they will just like all your videos and call you a twat on every single video you produce so it's 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 again it's column a and column b like part partly because i don't enjoy the competitive nature of online gaming now yeah but also because again like my audience seems to expect something from me and if i go against that i am basically as bad as hitler so i don't want to yeah that's i i fucking hate the way like um I used to get comments so like fucking sign Bacali or sign this whatever um and then like I would I would try really hard cuz I think um myself and yourself had this sort of 
uh, like alternative strategy uh, with career modes where it was it was based mainly in realism and and not as arcadey um, and stuff like that. And the fun was the journey and and how you could hold uh, it. It just it held some kind of real weight. Um, Shout out to my Leicester fucking career mode that you all said was unrealistic. Uh, you bunch of fucking stupid cunts. Um, but it's so hard to... Like, I always felt like I would have to drive like in, in, in like one lane for the whole time. And then people would be like... I don't know, the the people who like the more arcadey style of career mode would get louder and louder. And i try to satisfy both parties by being like, okay, look... It's not realistic that we would sign this player, but it is realistic that, like, now that we've won the league three years in a row, that we yeah. might sign somebody other than Charles and Zogbia. You know, we might <laughs> sign a, a a decent like striker at this stage, and then people start like I used to get really annoyed at how you could never satisfy everyone, and then I go to fucking MGH's channel, and he's fucking started an Arsenal career mode, and he signed Ibrahimovic in the first fucking episode, and it's like. Come on, man. <laughs> How it's, does this get... This is what everybody loves. But when I do, like, one fucking thing, it's like, you shouldn't have done this, you should have done this. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 that is exactly how I feel. Like, uh, in the series that I'm doing now, which I'm sure every single Midnight Hour listener is watching religiously, um, like, there was a point where, like, um, we had, like, uh, like uh, goalkeeper per like not crisis but like we only had like two goalkeepers in our match day squad in the premier league um uh, sorry in our in our whole squad for a premier league campaign where we had uh, a young goalkeeper in dean henderson and like a 17 year old goalkeeper for the bench and that's all we had in our side and i was like well you know realistically a team would probably sign like a veteran backup you know like we've seen in real life happen quite a lot so i thought why don't i bring in you know someone like joe hart out of contract at the end of the summer it's six because like all of our players are like fucking 19 years old like the average age in my squad now so why don't i try and keep it realistic and sign that and i sign like hard just for veteran experience and a dressing room leader as i call it and suddenly you've got people like going fucking crazy like you just wasted four million pounds like but it's not like you know it's like yeah i could spend three million and buy mason greenwood is that what you want and then like you know you do those sort of things and then people start complaining it's unrealistic it's like well, mm. what, what do you want from me like do you want a realistic career mode where like you know yeah occasionally i will not spend my money on fucking 17 year olds for a whole summer or do you want literally just wander kid fc where every player in the starting 11 is 19 or younger like yeah. i don't understand what you want from me and like it's just yeah because you can't again you're right there you can't satisfy both parties because it seems like whenever you do one thing the other side shout louder if that makes mm -hmm. sense yeah, like yeah. if you appease if you appease one group they won't you know necessarily uh show their appreciation but the group that weren't happy that the, the unreal realistic brigade might then start screaming louder the fact you've just signed mason greenwood for 50 pence in a mars bar um and then like if you go the realistic route and you sign like veteran players because your starting age is an average of 12 um you would then have people starting to shout at you because you're not like i had a comment actually uh, a few seasons ago from someone saying uh lol you're so shit at the game you're using a 68 rated center half it's like the rating shouldn't matter if it's about realism. Players don't have a physical rating in real life. Yeah. Like, you don't yeah. slap fucking 82 on Harry Maguire's forehead every time he steps onto the pitch. Like, it's just... <laughs> you know what I, I mean? Know, like, yeah. It's just... It's really... Like, you can't... And that's the thing. Like, I've learned over the years you can't please everyone. So with my current series now, I'm just doing whatever the fuck I feel like, basically. And I'm just... I'm, I'm making it more old school in a sense that back in the old days, like, like you never got those sort... Well, you got them occasionally. But you didn't get as many comments as you did now. And I think that part of the reason why is because of the change of demographics in YouTube. And I know I bang on about this all the time. And anyone that's listened to me talk over the past few years will think, here we go again. But, like, there are just so many kids that watch YouTube videos now. And, you know, it is very hard to explain to a younger viewer why you do the things you do in a career mode series when they mm. know, well, you could sign Jaden Sancho for £10 million for a championship side you know not like that but you know you know what i mean like it's yeah, very yeah, hard yeah. To, it's very hard to make them understand that it 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 it's not all about doing the very best thing every single time because career mode is such an easy game like if you wanted to win the fa cup with a league one side you probably could if you had the money you could sign Neymar for Shrewsbury town like it's not it's not realistic and it's it's not that challenging and it is very easy to because there's no incentive 
to buy older players unlike in football manager for example older players bring something like experience and uh more traits and the possibility of being a backroom staff member or being a team leader in a dressing room in career mode there is no incentive for buying a player over the age of 28 like yeah, I know, you, might, yeah. you might as well just sell every single player that has hit 27 or older and just sign every teenage talent in the game because because also because the players grow so quickly within three years you've got the best side in the world it's, it's mad the way as well you know, if, um you know like harry kane used to be a very underrated player in all games because people thought that he was a one season wonder or just like a you know an average player going through a purple patch or whatever if you had yeah. like 68 harry kane in uh the year 2014 or whatever in career mode and you replicate his exact real life um trajectory and you get him up to like probably 73 rated let's be real yeah. um and then like but he's he's scoring 30 goals a season reliably and and um whatever like he, his value is still going to be like 1.2 million. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it's so it's fucking. Funny, dumb. It's funny you said that because that's that's exactly what's happening in my series right now. So I've got a striker called Tony, and like he is now 28 years old, and he has just scored in four consecutive seasons, both in the Premier League and in the Serie A. He'll win four straight Golden Boots. He's got four straight seasons of 30 plus goals a season. It's the most unbelievable striker ever used. But the only way he's growing is because I'm training him. Like he's mm-hmm. he's not growing any natural ratings, which means that he's gone from eighty to eighty five all through training. If he had that kind of form in real life, he's like ninety one overall. Yeah, but instead, playing for Barcelona. <laughs> exactly. But in the game, it's like, no, he, he can't grow because he's over the age of twenty four and we say that his potential is seventy eight. So if he wants to get better, you have to train him. It's like, what the fuck? Like, how is that like I, I've always believed that potential is just so weird like because they've brought in the new dynamic potential for this year but it clearly doesn't work i'm like, shocked i know <laughs> but like if a player has that kind of form like just just think what i said there four straight seasons of 30 plus goals in top tier european leagues and four straight golden boots if a player has that they're, they're, they get a massive upgrade for the new season they're like 89 overall 90 overall yeah, yeah. You're in the game it's like game, the game says he's got 78 potential so if you want him to be any better than that doesn't matter if he scores 100 goals a season or not the only way he's getting better is if you train him like, yeah, I know it's, it's so gamey. So, it is. It's just so stupid, and like the same players grow to the same overall almost every season. It's just repetitive. Do you um, mostly? And do you still watch football at all? No, like no, I don't. I pretend I do, but I don't. Yeah, um, I'm kind of the same. Yeah, I, I feel like I have to because I need my audience to think I still have some kind of like credibility in football chat. But I stopped watching football. The last actually, the last game of football I watched was. This season it was uh, Luton versus Millwall, and I watched it because I was in, in hospital, so I watched it on my, my phone. Um, but that's the only game of football I've watched in like two seasons. I don't, mm. I don't watch football at all. Um, I've got no interest in it anymore. I just can't be asked with that. Um, I, I pretend like I still know what's going on, but all I do really is just go onto Reddit soccer and look at the top things that have been said in a day, and then I might tweet something about it as if I know all about it. But that's that's as far as it goes, really. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Jeez. I yeah. still like I actually I watch it in fairness like I'll always have a game oh, yeah. on on the TV or whatever but I'm not really that really? invested um like yeah but I'm mostly just playing Age of Empires or something so yeah. I'm not really paying that much attention I've set match of the day to record every episode for the last two seasons and I haven't fucking watched a single <laughs> one of them like um I don't know but I do still see the goals and stuff uh, like it's just I guess kind of like everything it's in your fucking Instagram discover feed or it's on your Reddit timeline or something like that nowadays yeah. um I will uh, I, I still follow uh, our journalist for Millwall and uh, so I get the goal updates from him on Twitter so I'll, I'll like every time we score uh, mm. I say we meaning Millwall I don't even know if I'm calling myself a Millwall fan anymore cuz I haven't watched us play in about three seasons uh but um but yeah, no, I, I don't I don't actually like I will go to fair, I will go on to BBC Sport at about five o'clock and I'll look and see who did what in the Premier League. Um but that's about as far as it goes. The only involvement I have for football now is checking when the big game, games are on so I can schedule my videos around them so they don't coincide with them being uploaded at the same time the game's going on. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's... about as far as it goes. Like uh, I know that like um Man United played Liverpool last weekend, didn't they? I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't watch. I don't. I don't know who won. I mean, uh, I assume I assume Liverpool won because if Man United. Pretty sure they won two one or no two nil. I think it was right. actually. Right. Um, but I mean, if yeah. Man United won, then I would have known about it clearly because it would have been all over BBC Sport. But I I don't care. 
like it's not like like as far as it goes for me like if the gate because obviously i live in like a borough of manchester if if manchester united or city are playing i might check to find out i'm not getting on the tram with everyone else going, going to the football game yeah, but that's yeah. about as far as it goes. Like, I don't like even the Champions League final. Like, I don't even watch that. Like, Liverpool played Spurs in the final. I know they won, obviously, but I didn't. I didn't watch it. I don't. I don't even know what the score was. Like, I. I got no two nil to Liverpool. I watched it. Yeah. It was oh, a yeah. bad time. Was, uh, <laughs> I consider myself to be a Spurs fan, so I yeah. went out for that and uh, went Damn. to a pub full of Liverpool fans because I live in Ireland. So. Ouch. Yeah, everyone here supports either Man United or Liverpool, and it's fucking exhausting, and it's one of the main reasons why I actually have lost interest in football, because if you don't support one of those teams, you get, like, no respect, and, like, your opinion doesn't matter, and you get laughed at all the time, and it's like, you can fuck off you support these teams because they win everything. I mean, mean, tribalism in football is definitely one of the reasons why... I've lost a lot of interest in it. Yeah, same. just a constant kind of. In fact, you put out a really funny tweet actually a few months ago when uh, the old firm Derby was on, and it was something like, "What a glorious day for me to go and shout like abuse, sectarian abuse at like people <laughs> because of the football team they support or something." And it's true. It's like I, I just love the idea that like I don't know. I was watching. What was I watching? The, um, oh, I'll tell you what it was. It was. Uh, do you know Arsenal fan TV? I, don't, I, I don't certainly their, do. Yeah, I, I don't watch their channel or nothing, but um, I know the guy, the Robbie, the big, uh, the the big head honcho guy there. Um, I, I there was a, a video. I think it might have been like a North London derby, or whatever, and like he was getting like abuse from like Spurs fans. And I remember I was watching a video on Twitter. Someone recorded it, and the Spurs fans were like in their fucking like late thirties, forties, fifties. I was thinking, how do you get to that point in your life when that's what you do on a Saturday afternoon? Mm. Like you literally go and abuse someone off the internet because of the football team they support. Like, I just, it baffles me completely. Like, I don't understand the whole kind of, like, and, and people always bring up, when I say stuff like that, people always bring up this thing and they say, oh, you haven't got enough passion. You haven't got enough passion. It's like, mate, I've fucking spent thousands and thousands of thousands of pounds watching my team up and down in the country. <laughs> you should say, there, mate, I'll fucking do my... you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. But, like, freezing my fucking, like, nuts off watching us play long ball football to a six foot striker in a 2-0 defeat away at Bolton like fucking and I ain't got enough passion that is nonsense but like that I mean that was the only now I haven't got enough passion so you can say it now sure <laughs> but uh, yeah back yeah. in the old days like I just I just can't understand like uh, tribal because there'd, there'd always be like some kind of like um uh you know community within a, a football team and I think that's great you know a mm-hmm. sense of belonging to your football club you know when you especially when you go to away games because whenever I do watch Millwall like we haven't been for the past two seasons but I, I go to away games there is that sense the community and you see the same people each time you know you can have a chat every now and then. it's great but um it, it is the tribalism aspect that i've just totally lost all interest there's sort of like uh, sort of made me lose a lot of interest in it because i just don't understand where they, like banter in stadiums is great you know like bantering of opposition fans is great but i mean it, it's so obvious when you, you cross lines and you start doing plain gestures to cardiff fans when emiliano salad died in a plane crash yeah, and it's like yeah. how do you not see there is a line you haven't just towed, you know, stepped your toe over. You've like catapulted yourself into that territory. How do you not? You're you're a forty year old man. Like, how do you not? How do you think that is acceptable behaviour on a Saturday afternoon? Like, it's just it, it baffles me. But uh, anyway, that's my opinion on football. So, uh... <laughs> and uh, one of the main pundits um, fucking spat out of his car window at some guy's daughter. So it's a uh, it's a very strange world that we live in. But um. At least, uh, at least people don't get killed all the time like they used to back in the old days, you know. Thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> Damn Sorry right. Guys. Yeah. Um, uh, so tell me, do you think Bernie Sanders will secure the Democratic nomination? No, just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. The real reason why you're here. I thought I would get an expert. <laughs> On American liberalism and you know, Mate, I was watching. I was watching Fahrenheit 11.9 of Michael Moore yesterday. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. How is yeah. it? Yeah, uh, I got about 25 minutes in, and I knew about two of the issues they were talking about. So <laughs> that's oh, about right. as far as I got into that. Um, they got to the actually. I'll tell you what. I was uh, th- there is a part of it that I know about. It's the Flint water crisis, mm-hmm. and then they were discussing that, and I was like, oh, I'm quite interested in that because I was reading about it on Reddit, and uh, after it went into like uh, March for our lives or whatever, like kids doing marches i i sort of i didn't know what it was about so i haven't finished it yet it's a long documentary it's like two hours long there's so much to listen to and it was a bit where he was, he was, he was trying to like make the uh the the um the assumption that donald trump's a pedophile due to his weird relationship with ivanka trump which is very weird to be fair mm-hmm. um and I, I just 
I don't know. I just I found it a very uncomfortable viewing, and I, I couldn't really sit through it because I was like, "Well, if he is a pedophile and he's in charge of America, right, it's a bit of a." I don't think one. it's likely that he's a pedophile. No, so. that's probably libelous. Let me just strike that from the record there. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, that was a, it, was, it was just weird the way he was sort of like shoehorning it in. And I was like, yeah, I know he's got some very, like, I know he does things that are very uncomfortable, make for uncomfortable viewing, but I thought that was a bit of a bridge too far, even for Michael Moore. So It's really annoying but, that uh, people can never just like assess things on the face of what they are. Um, I saw this tweet the other day that was a fucking, like a screenshot of a paragraph from an article, right? And it said, uh, in 2002, when George Bush was on the phone to Jacques Chirac, um, trying to um, trying to get France to get involved in the Iraq war, right? And uh, so this article said um, that George Bush invoked uh, Bible imagery and said, like, look, um, I forget the name, it's like... Magog and Gog or something like that to two cities in the Middle East that are relevant in the Bible somehow I'm not sure it's um, It's Protestantism, so it's completely evil to me a Catholic boy. No, just kidding I don't give a shit about any of it, <laughs> but um So it was the article heavily implied that George Bush was being led by what he thought was the word of God basically to try and get Jacques Chirac into the war and um I, I sent it to my friend and I was like, that's fucking mad. And my friend replied, like, what's the source of that? And I was like, that's a very good question. Let me check. And I, I Googled it and it's <laughs> completely fucking false, right? But yeah. the amount of people who believe, like, I straight up believed it when I first saw it because, like, George Bush is an idiot. Um, well, I don't, I don't actually genuinely think that he's an idiot. I think that that would be really stupid of me to think because there's, like, <laughs> enough evidence that he isn't an idiot. <laughs> but, like, there are so many, like, demonstrable examples of him saying and doing really stupid things that you could point to and be like, wow, this guy was the president. Like, for example, he fucking choked on a pretzel, you know? Like, he, he <laughs> said that... He called bin Laden um, Saddam Hussein, like, a, a bunch of fucking times. Like, he yeah. just... You know, he's done so many fucking stupid things, this guy. Um, but instead, we have to make shit up to get angry at with it. And... Um, people are doing the same now with Donald Trump like no one can actually fucking attack him on like his policy proposals or you know like no one can just point to like general inconsistencies instead it has to be like oh, he's a he's a pedophile uh, schizophrenic uh, fucking like it's like come on <laughs> that's fucking like yeah, it's, it's weird like the, the assassination of someone's character is like deemed to be more uh, reputable and newsworthy than actually discussing his policy and yeah, I find that yeah. thing just so fucking fucked up but I think I think a lot of that is just due to like social media. Like it's just a lot more clickbaity, and it's still a lot more sort of like attention grabbing. You know, to talk about his, uh, you know, going into like Miss Teen America. So there was actually there was a bit in the documentary with Michael Moore where um, there's a little girl who's like 10 years old, and he says to the dad something like, "I'm going to be dating her in 10 years. Can you believe that?" You know, that that is more interesting to people than mm -hmm. you know a, a polished debate debating one of his policies or whatever and i i, I, I it, it is obviously fucking weird don't get me wrong mm -hmm. yeah no um... it's, there are so many re there are so many ways that he is actually fucking batshit and saying that like people it should be given more attention but instead it's more like the outlandish shit like you know maybe he's a pedophile when like he's <laughs> like come on yeah like, it's just they were, they were showing pictures with him and Ivanka and like his hand positions and whatnot and it's yeah. just a bit like you know like holding her like by the, the waist or whatever. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. And it's just like you are you are going to a serious extreme there, you know, trying to you know manipulate people into believing that he might possibly be a paedophile in love with his own daughter sexually, and it's like you don't have to go that far, and it, it it's just a bit, I don't know, I just it just seems a bit forced. To be it's, honest. It's also like, um, it's a really weird pose, but like, he doesn't do anything normal. Like, have you seen him drink a, drink that bottle of water that time? <laughs> like, he looked directly into the fucking eclipse. Like, he just, there's yeah. nothing he can do with a like, reasonable level of competency that's comparable to a normal human being. So, like, it, yeah. it doesn't shock me that he fucking put his hand on his daughter's leg or something because he thought I that know. that's how you show affection. Because he's reptilian yeah. and, you know, is uh, um, a shape shifting. <laughs> uh, lizard person, so it's yeah, it's a calm down, David Ike. <laughs> I'll never calm down, David Ike. <laughs> I was um in the pub the other night, and uh, oh yeah, this I was I go to the pub by myself sometimes, right? And uh, you sounded so interested when I said <laughs> I was in the pub the other night. It was just a weird segue from <laughs> Donald Trump's reptilian shape. 
Is yeah, I know. Uh, trust me, it's relevant. But, um, <laughs> okay. This, uh, yeah, I go to the pub on Fridays like by myself, and I really fucking enjoy it. Like a little bit of me time, and uh, it's great. Mm. And uh, I just feel like I don't know because I'm sure you can probably relate to this in some way. That like, um, but when I come home from work in the evenings, I don't really know what to do, and so I just waste fucking time. And like, I could do productive things, but I'm so worn down from work that I don't want to put energy into anything. I just want to fucking sit here, like play my little fucking Age of Empires game, or like you know, just basically like vegetate like a fucking zombie. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I started going to the pub. <laughs> Because that makes sense. I feel like I'm being very unproductive. I'm going to go sit at a bar by myself and fucking drown myself in alcohol. Yeah, but um, it's it's uh, it's engaging in a way that like I challenge myself to not look at my phone. I just kind of sit there and be alone with my thoughts. And it's great because I can, you know, think through some, some real shit, you know, like... Uh, <laughs> How are they gonna sand or how are they gonna salt all the roads when the snow comes next week? But um, <laughs> so I'm sitting there, uh, on my first pint, and this guy comes over to me and he goes, "Sorry, mate, are you busy?" And I was like, <laughs> so tempted to be like, "Do I fucking look like I'm busy to you, pal?" <laughs> sitting here in a pub by myself at five o'clock, and um, he goes, "Do you want a game of pool?" And I was like, uh, like, partly I was like, "No, I want to sit here by myself and not be bothered by you. You fucking." Yeah ignorant cunt um and i was like ah look i haven't played pool in years and he goes ah go on it's better than sitting by yourself isn't it and i was like no <laughs> it isn't um but uh I, I said fuck it yeah like well, let's play a few games of pool and um i can only describe this guy just as if we were both in school me and him would be in the complete opposite social cliques like I'm right. there dressed entirely in black with like a fucking heavy metal t-shirt on and he's like <laughs> a polo shirt like white trainers and a gold chain just like a real fucking I guess in England he would be like a bloke's bloke you know that sure. kind of way yeah. a lad's lad oh, yeah, um, yeah absolutely that's exactly what I was thinking <laughs> um, just you know a, a proper geezer isn't it uh, <laughs> so uh, this uh we're playing pool and it, like he's really good at pool obviously because i just see him as being like a lad's lad so they're all just really good at pool somehow i don't know i must have missed the fucking <laughs> class on masculinity where every guy just happens to be very fucking good at pool and i'm not and i don't know like did they all fucking do this one day behind my back <laughs> and i didn't know about it or what like i don't it's so fucking Secretly weird to me. Months, yeah. yeah and like i'm not even bad at it i'm fine like i understand the principle of it i'm able to do the angles and stuff it takes me like a, a, a couple of games to warm up or whatever but like everyone else is fucking just miles better than me it's like a, it's like i'm playing fucking yeah. chess against the ai on super hard yeah um and so this is a very long-winded story i'm very sorry but you you have to understand how fucking weird this was for me um so he yeah and and that's great and then we're like all right we're, we're done playing pool now we've played five he won three i won two um so we sit down uh and and he's like rapping along to all these like old school 90s tunes and i'm just thinking like <laughs> this fella is just very normal like i if i were like him that would be good and i would probably have yeah. a lot less self-doubt and and like i'd be more confident and stuff like he just fits in like he just took the ball here ran with it um a very good social engineer and then he uh i forget what he asked me what i do and it's very hard to explain my job to to you know you normal people so um i just say oh. i work in finance and he's like ah yeah the banking world is uh, completely corrupt, you know, and I was like fairly aware of that, I guess in abstract, yes, yeah. there have been lots of instances of corruption and he's like, no, but uh, like the government controls everything you know what government means? <laughs> government means controlling your mind, that's what it means in Latin, that's why it's called that he starts going through all of this stuff and eventually I find out that he doesn't even think that planes hit the towers, he thinks it was holograms oh, um he doesn't think any mass shooting has ever happened. Um, yeah. It just every single fucking conspiracy theory, um, and it, it, it's unbelievable. He he was saying that like my birth cert is uh, publicly traded on the New York Stock Exchange, which like <laughs> I fucking work in stocks, all right. I fucking I I own stock on the NYSE. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've never fucking bought into somebody's birth cert on there. I don't even know how that would work. I don't even know what the monetary value of your fucking birth cert is supposed to be. Um, but yeah, it was it was uh, such a fucking mind fuck. 
um, just a completely normal guy by every um, you know uh, element of observation I had to hand, and then one conversation, and then bang, lizard people and fucking <laughs> ah, so weird. Like I just I didn't yeah. know what to make of it. But um, I was very nice. If, if anyone is like, oh, you're such a snob, like I was very nice to him. Um, I didn't uh, make fun of him in any way or like you know and. You know, when I left, I was like, "Oh, really good talking to you, man. Super interesting." And then I walked out and threw myself into the river. Lift. <laughs> no, I'm, to be fair, like, I'm always very tolerant of people that have those sort of beliefs. I actually got talking to someone once in a bar who believes that Sandy Hook was a false flag, mm-hmm. and he was talking about how uh, all the parents were actors, and uh, you know, you could you could look one of the parents up, and and they were an actor. And if you would look them up, it turns out that acting was a part time job, and that justifies them being an actual actor and not actually you know just being a normal human being um and i always like try and be very tolerant and mindful of people that have those sort of opinions i think it's just their belief but then part of me just thinks that is so disrespectful Mm -hmm. to the fucking parents of kids that were murdered in that you know it's the same with like speaking of 9-11 like there was one summer i was like proper into 9-11 and i've never believed in any conspiracy theory (laughs) proper into (laughs) 9-11 like (laughs) man that was no i'd love another 9-11 like just in terms of global events that one was that was well, then, man, I'll always remember that. Um, but no, like, um, <laughs> but, like <laughs> what are your like, hobbies? Ah, uh, you know, nine eleven. <laughs> but like, I'll just be reading comments from people saying stuff like, "Ah, oh, there's like um, a second before like the plane hits the tower, and you can see any other tower like smoke comes out of the tower or something." And that was their like um, way, the government's way of sneakily, without anyone being able to notice, like detonating bombs with like TNT and some shit to. Mm make the buildings collapse and the, the one that always gets me is when like uh the, the common phrase jet fuel can't melt steel beams or whatever yep and the thing that always gets me is when i think like uh, i don't know the science of it so i can't dispute that theory maybe that's right maybe that's wrong i don't know but a fucking plane has just been belted into a building i think there's other factors of yeah, play I know, than yeah. just jet fuel being poured on a steel beam i don't think it's just one thing that caused the tower to collapse when a fucking plane was flown into it it actually baffles me and like i can't even get and the hologram ones are the best because i didn't even realize there were people that actually believe in that shit when they're like oh but you can see the plane like it does it like it goes behind the tower and it's like that's just the angle. Like, it's <laughs> You're watching fucking... grainy fucking... I like, know. Barely only... 2000s. But, like, this is mostly, like, 90s equipment that we're dealing with here. Like, yeah, you know... yeah you've, got, you've got one video of the first uh, tower being hit by a plane, and it's firemen. I watched a documentary about it, and there's firemen recording it. It's the only actual video they have of it. There's one... I think there's one other one from a car, but it's not clear at all. And it's, like, you're trying to, like, descramble and, like, analyze, like, a, a five-second video clip from one angle, like, from 15 years ago, and trying to justify that the plane did not hit a tower because of a hologram. And it's like, how, like, desperate do you have to be yeah. to get to that stage where that's your belief system? Like, so I don't... want to know the best part is, uh, this guy said to me, like, no planes. And I said to him, okay, there's a, there's a flight manifest, there's a black box, there's video evidence of it happening, and there are, um victims there are sorry there are fam uh victims families um that exist and you know what he said to me with a straight face he goes listen you can't argue with fact and i have fact (laughs) on my side (laughs) like sorry what (laughs) fact is not a thing that you fucking say like oh man fact on my side i love that let's start using that from now on but it is, it is crazy, like the fucking conspiracy theories like that. Like, like, like no, no planes were used, and it's just like mm. thousands of thousands of people watching planes fly through an air. Like, it's just like a plane crashes in like a field of Pennsylvania or whatever. It's not a plane. Like, it's a, it's a, you know, it's it's not a real plane. Like, no planes were actually used on 9/11. It's like, how can you possibly, you know, dispute that? Nah. Like, it's not going to hold up in court, is it? It's like no planes were used in. 9-11. Yeah, but there was a plane found in Pennsylvania. Nah, it was a hologram. Nah, it didn't actually exist. It's just like fucking, there's fucking hundreds of people jumping out of a building, like fucking from the hundredth floor. People are watching this absolute travesty. Nah. I know, yeah. I think so. Nah. 
I like the fucking hell. Like the, the false flag ones are always weird as well. Like when people say they're like trained actors and shit, and like no kids die and stuff, and it's like, sorry, this was a school. Mm-hmm. Do you think that school was set up for like decades, and and not a single child went there that day? Like they just, I, I can't. It, it, it like again, the the Sandy Hook conspiracy is just so fucking weird. Like people saying that these are trained actors and whatnot, and and no children actually died. And I think, but you do realize it was a school before the shooting, right? Like there were children attending class is day after day what you think just one day like everyone got a text saying don't come in today we're staging a fucking shooting and by the way keep your lips sealed because this is going to be fucking big mm. like it's uh, I, I can't conspiracy theories are weird like i i, I always i've always had this assumption i say assumption like belief that those that believe in conspiracy theories just want it to be more interesting than it actually is um and, and they want some kind of like uh, even if they don't believe it themselves they have to try and fool themselves into believing it because they want to support their own worldview that the government is corrupt and i just think it's just so like you can't you have to take certain things at face value and especially things like this yes of course like analyze them and, and like do your research and whatnot but like when it's when you're overwhelmed with a mountain of evidence just looking at it and saying yeah but and then like saying this i looked up this person on facebook and it turns out to do part-time acting maybe they're an actor it's mm. like there's a fucking stack of evidence right next door that proves that this actually happened how how can you dispute all of that? And I just love the fucking ignorance of someone just being like, nope, 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 nope. Like, just constantly saying no. And, like, again, with the 9-11 shit as well, like, no planes were used. It was fucking holograms. So you have to understand how fucking batshit mental that is. Like, there are fucking thousands of pieces of evidence to dispute the fact that there were actually planes used. And then there's just some guy just sitting in there like, no, well, I don't believe it. <laughs> so, it, there you go. It must require, you, like a, you must have, like, serious confidence in your in your beliefs like to be yeah. able to stand over it because like i'm very um i don't think that like i'm perfectly empirical or whatever but i always try and look at uh, like what what's the evidence what do the statistics say like if i hear something for example like one thing i've been hearing a lot lately is that um millennials and um iGen the the new generation uh, generation y is that what they're called I, I i've seen the shortened as iGen but that they're having less sex than than anybody and so i was like Okay, I hear this all the time. Uh, it doesn't seem true because everything that I'm constantly told by the baby boomers in Generation X is that um, uh, our generation is just is just drowning in depravity and um, and stuff like that. And so, I, like, I looked it up, and like, there's lots and lots and lots of evidence out there. There are so many studies done. Like, hundreds of thousands of people have been polled. Um, there are studies that have been done since the year like 1940 something where they've asked every like they've asked like a certain sample like when when did you have your first kiss and the the number has gotten the age that they were has gotten higher and higher and higher each year and this is something that they check like every single year and it's like so there's a lot of compelling evidence out there um and i looked it up and i was like okay i i actually believe this now because it seems that way but if I try to tell someone else that, they just don't fucking believe me. And they don't believe me because of their mm. own perception, nothing else. And then so you, you'll, you'll say something like, okay, but there are all these studies. Yeah, who are the studies done by? Like, I don't fucking know. Like, and, and then I have to go back and, and like, you have to be yeah. fucking armed to the teeth with facts and citations and, and everything. And then when that's not enough, they'll come at the institutions that, that the polling data comes from and say, well, who are they? And like this, like, you know, like the, the detractors won't even know who the fucking institution is in the first place but like you can tell what kind of person they are because usually it'll be something like yeah are they uh, owned by uh, jews <laughs> or else they'll be some or else they'll be like and and what's their who, who are their financial backers and stuff like that and it's just so i i feel like um when i was at the height of my uh conspiracy theory phase which i think everyone has gone through like um, I hear Joe Rogan say all the time that like your frontal cortex doesn't develop until you're 25 years old. Like your ability to think and rationalize in the world is is um, is extremely uh, different when you're 15 versus when you're 25, for example. Um, and when I was like 15, 16, I definitely thought that 9/11 was staged because I had seen so many documentaries um, yeah. and and stuff like that that were saying it. But I hadn't seen anyone actually argue the opposite point ever, so I had never been exposed to information um, like that would be housed in the 9/11 Commission report or whatever. Um, but I always thought, at least I, I think this now anyway. If I were to self-evaluate my um, person that I used to be. I just thought that I knew more about the world than everyone else around me, 
and that mm. it was just so obvious that they were all being fooled and I was the only one that could see the real truth and it was a real like elitist kind of thing for me like I just thought that I was smarter than everybody and um, I think if you think that and you never get humbled or you're not able to be humbled you'll just get worse and worse as time goes on because yeah. um, I don't know like there are lots of studies that also show that if you believe in one conspiracy theory you're far more likely to believe in more than one you know what I mean so like eventually sure. you go from being a 9-11 conspiracy theorist to maybe you don't believe the moon landings happened and then you just stop believing in the moon and then the earth is flat and mm. that's your life I, I, to be fair, I, used to, I used to be like that as well when I was younger I um, I used to believe that 9-11 was like an inside job and not to the extent that fucking holograms were used uh, mm -hmm. I used to believe that like the CIA kind of like allowed it to happen like they had prior knowledge of it and just because I would like look up like one or two things and I'd say oh that's proved it to me without doing any more research I'd just be like yeah it supports my view so yeah I'll say that as fact mm -hmm. facts on my side um but no like, I, I would just think you know that's that's how it is like the cia like allowed it to happen and the fbi allowed it to happen and all this sort of shy and i just think that's that's true because i kind of want it to be true and then, like i said like i would go from that to thinking maybe the moon landing didn't happen because there's like uh, like a flag that's waving and instead of like looking at the other side of the coin and saying why is the flag waving i would say well the flag is waving and there's supposed to be no wind on the moon <laughs> yeah that's the fucking stupidest so, yeah, one like, it's like it's it's explainable in five fucking seconds i know, I know. On Google, this is the point though this is the point because i would just see that and someone would say yeah well there's supposed to be no fucking wind on the moon so how do you explain that i'll be like oh yeah good point you're right okay yeah. the moon line didn't happen like I, I wouldn't i wouldn't look at it from the other side of the coin and try and have like a balanced perspective i just looked at it from one side that supported my own worldview and that was good enough for me that was satisfactory yeah. but as the years have gone by like i said i have begun to sort of become more objective and just look at the facts and look at the figures look at it, the arguments from both sides and um and, and and decide what i think is 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 right from from there on out um bit of a weird segue but um i think one of the things that really helped me with sort of being i think what you said there being humbled was like a really great example it's like um uh going away from conspiracy theories a bit i used to believe that i was like not the smartest man in the world obviously <laughs> like the smartest man in my house yeah sometimes but um i used to think like you know um i'm right about almost everything and i'm the most ethical person in the world and like all my policies are like spot on and stuff and i remember when like uh social media had got to a point where there was like drama over like you know what was allowed to be shown on instagram and youtube in terms of exposing women's body parts and whatnot um we're going back quite a few years ago now and i was like this is fucking bullshit like how are we allowing like apps like instagram and twitter and like fucking youtube like having like you know fucking like kids watching are like six seven years old seeing like nowadays like youtube like you, you go on youtube and it doesn't take you long to find like a, a like a lingerie try on haul or, or something mm -hmm. um and it's like i can't believe that these videos are, are are allowed on on youtube and i'm not saying there's anything wrong with a woman wanting to celebrate her body or anything like that i'm just saying like it's pretty fucking clear that like it's an easy way for like a six seven year old to search these things up and it's the same with, like instagram like it doesn't take that long to find a an influencer that exposes themselves quite a bit if you will and this is a few years ago now when there was quite a lot of debate as to whether it should be allowed and i was so sure that at some point instagram and youtube and twitter and whatnot they're all gonna like say okay it's gone too far now like there are kids that are, again as young as six years old like because twitter allows porn videos on their site mm -hmm. like yeah. uh, and it's just and that that blew my fucking mind mind when i discovered that for the first time and had a very fun evening after that <laughs> you don't even have to have an account either you can no, just no, yeah. you can just um it, it, it'll come up when you're in private browsing say sensitive media yeah yeah and you just click view uh, <laughs> yeah i know and, that, and it literally baffled me because i was like do you know how easy it is for like a six because kids kids uh are on technology younger than ever before and i don't think that's a bad thing it's a good i think it's a good thing but they're introduced technology over before it is so fucking easy for like a six-year-old child to navigate twitter and get to a point account yeah. and like watch some fucking pure bdsm hardcore porn yeah. and i was like so sure like again we go back like a few years ago now that like twitter and, and all the major social media apps are going to be like okay this is this has gone too far now we've got to take a stand we've got to do something about this because kids are getting hold of this sort of shit and it's way too inappropriate for their age group but it just it's never happened and i remember thinking at some point like you know because i remember tweeting about it and saying like you know kids are on these apps man like this isn't right like you could have like a again like 
a six year old boy watching fucking hardcore like femdom gay anal rape porn like this shouldn't be happening it's and like pretty vanilla just... stuff but yeah I, I yeah it. for me anyway yeah that's that's Thursday night stuff but like I just kept thinking like surely at some point something's gonna happen and it never did and that really humbled me because I was like I'm right here like I'm right like those apps are gonna do something about it and they never did and like you just you go on like I said you go on Twitter and it takes you about 30 seconds to search something in search a weird fetish or kink that you have and I've got <laughs> Oh, enough of them and it, you're like you're literally on an account within like 30 seconds viewing like jordan you're peterson doing. deep fakes <laughs> <laughs> it's just mad and again that really humbled me it, went, it, it sort of made me go from like this whole kind of like again elitist perspective where i am right and this is ethical and 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 you know this is sorry this is unethical and this needs to be taken down and shit to still being on the sites and it made me think maybe i'm not actually right about everything you know because mm. i used to think i was right about literally everything every single thing but actually i might possibly be wrong about this and um you need those experiences in life those humbling experience where you sort of kick to the curb a little bit sometimes a little bit too hard but to make you realize that you're not actually a fucking god like you don't actually know everything there is to know about the world you know yeah it was the same for me that, that i watched um the first zeitgeist movie and i just thought every i thought that it was the most legit thing that i'd ever seen in my entire life i thought that america were gonna invade venezuela the same way they did iraq and afghanistan i thought that they were gonna move towards a one world government like i thought all of these things and uh it's crazy like i'm so glad that i you know managed to crawl my way out of that i like i was very young at the time in fairness um but it, it's it's another thing like um you know how the remember that fucking thing the covington high school shit do you remember that happening uh elaborate it was like a, these kids from a Catholic school were at the Washington Monument or something, and there was a whole bunch of other people there. Like there was different protests that were going on and stuff. And um, eventually, what happened was there was this uh, Native American guy with a drum, and he was banging it while in the face of this like seventeen-year-old oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And first, at, at first uh, glance, the media were like wow, this kid is such a little shit. Look at him showing no respect to this war vet or whatever. And then, like, as the story kept on unfolding, more and more um, videos were released. And it turned out that, like, the kid was pretty much entirely fucking innocent. And he was, like, mm. facing up against this, like, older guy who was, like, super intimidating, like, up in his face. And there was all of these other things going on as well in the background. Like, there were all these different, like, ethnic groups shouting stuff at each other and... Um, it w would have been like such a stressful situation for this kid, and then he gets fucking pilloried on social media. They he actually just successfully sued uh, CNN. Um, but um, I always I always see these cases, and I'm like, okay, this is like a child. Like even even when I first saw it, I thought that the kid was being a little shit. But I, at no point was I like, all right, let's all right, get the nukes. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's a kid. Like kids do fucking really stupid things. Um, but anyway, one of the yeah. kids in his class got rejected from Harvard because it was discovered that like he said the N word in like a group chat on WhatsApp or something like that. And um, I don't remember what the context of it was. He didn't explicitly call someone the N word, but he like set up a scenario in his like he was like making a joke, like a play by play joke, and in the joke yeah. somebody within the joke said the n-word i'm pretty sure that's what the context of it was but um so anyway his, his uh his application got rescinded or whatever he had been accepted for harvard and, and then now he was being um rejected and um all the people in the comments were this is like a 17 year old kid and, and all the people in the comments like on reddit like everywhere were just like oh look it doesn't matter if he said this when he was 14 or 15 um that word is too far once you say that like you're that's it's whatever like there's no way he's redeemable like all of this <laughs> shit and it's like i don't like i'm really fucking glad that none of the stuff that i said on the internet when i was 13 is like etched into infinity anywhere and yeah. that the servers back then like fucking java chat like all myspace and all that <laughs> all that stuff is gone because like holy shit did i say some fucking awful stuff and like I, i'm not saying that i was going around like <laughs> shouting racist abuse at minorities i like i didn't do anything like that but like i would do that kind of thing where you make scenarios where like oh what if someone says the n-word in in the joke is that is it then like that sort of thing um but it just it's really uh i don't know how i fucking start talking about this um 
was it because oh about like being humbled and stuff i think we're actually making it worse for people to learn their lessons now because yeah. it's far more likely that this kid who um has probably grown less racist over time like most people do this there's lots of studies that show that too like that the younger you are the more racist you are because you have a familiarity bias and like a hardwired like genetically programmed familiarity bias and stuff like that um but like now that he's been shunned from society for making what he will always stubbornly maintain was a joke or whatever like there's no mm. fucking way like and he, he'll never even be redeemable for the people who like have such an issue with it you know and now he's been um kind of in a way like screwed out of his you know potentially ivy league education or whatever um and it's just going to create a more bitter person and a more divided society and um, it's just so much harder for him to ever be humbled now by this and he won't yeah. be humbled he'll only ever have false um humility you know it's kind of like i think the whole kind of like cancel culture is just one of the weirdest shirts like mm. i just don't get it like we we go so harsh on people yeah and we we sometimes like dehumanize them in certain ways especially yeah. like influencers are great for that like we, we would like dehumanize an influencer because they've got like two million subscribers on youtube or whatever yeah and just it's just literally just give them fucking dogs abuse because back in 2013 they tweeted fag and it's like <laughs> you know you know what i mean like it's yeah. just it's amazing because like people actually go on twitter to search for like phrases that people have used and that yeah, um yeah. and and they will literally like, bring up a tweet from like 2011 when the guy was like 15 or 14 and had like you know 200 followers or whatever all from school and and they will literally say oh well you know you might be a youtuber now of like seven million subscribers but back in 2011 you posted uh, shut up you fag and, yeah. uh, and suddenly that means you're a massive homophobe and you still believe that you know like yeah, in, yeah. in eight, eight eight years you've not grown once as a person because that tweet from eight years ago when you were 15 is still in existence so therefore you're homophobic therefore we're cancelling you uh, you know and it's going to be like um i'm just trying to think of it like a youtuber like uh ksi is cancelled party or whatever and mm -hmm. it's like what the fuck you know how i don't like how is that productive like how is that going to teach that person like a lesson from a tweet they posted like eight years ago it's it's, it's kind of like um people would love to go so uh harsh on people because they want to show that they're on the side of right i feel that's the that thing yeah yeah like a, the a really common thing that i hear um in in this sort of argument is there's like a is it c.s lewis has this book where he talks about how this I don't, the, the the moral anyway is that like um certain types of people who advocate for socialism actually hate the rich way more than they love the poor and i think that that's the way that like people hate homophobic people way more than they love homosexuals you know what i mean like yeah. it's it's yeah. just it's like i guess it's like the concept of white knighting or whatever it's like to show your the the most recent thing is that um fucking joe rogan endorsed bernie sanders and bernie sanders oh tweeted. yeah yeah what about that? and then joe rogan trends worldwide and now half of fucking twitter is like wow fuck bernie sanders i cannot <laughs> believe that he would he would um tweet out this endorsement from a bigot transphobe yeah. racist like I checks know. notes joe rogan <laughs> Yeah, it's it's so fucking like, and it, it, that's the thing. Like, like having a person like redeeming themselves, like it's it's not measured on like whether the person actually has. It's based on whether the person that I don't know how to explain this. Like, it's it's very hard for people to believe that someone can redeem themselves if they've said something in the past which is against their worldview yeah. and they don't really care if they do it or not they just want to show that they're against it. And like, they don't care if they've been rehabilitated in some way. They just want to show that they're against it. And that is so fake. Like, it's like, surely you want that person to learn from their mistakes, not fucking drive them into the ground and ruin their fucking job and their life forever. I know. It's it's such it, a it, it, core it, principle of liberalism, too. Like, that's one of the main things that makes the left so tolerant is that it doesn't yeah. believe that once you've done one thing, that that's the make of you forever and that's all you'll ever be. Like, it's really strange to me. Is um, it's just this, again, it is the cancel culture that we're living in. I'll just never understand it. Like the, the willingness to like try and destroy a YouTuber's career, for example, over a tweet they posted when they were twelve, mm -hmm. uh, is just mind blowing. It's just un, it's unreal. Like there are people that will search for a phrase or a word that someone has used, and you know, I, I, I 
occasionally think because I've said things in the past that I've been you know hammered for and rightfully so and I've apologized for and I've moved on and it's it's an issue that's now left in the past but I'm always worried that at some point someone might find a tweet from 2009 where I might have made a joke like, like we were saying earlier with the um the kid like I might have it might have been intended as a joke but because it was like 10 years ago mm -hmm. um there's no way of me like doing that and suddenly now it's been discovered and, and I've got to defend my actions as a 15 year old kid or whatever I was yeah when yeah. it was joke and i you know I, I well i can't i can't it's you know i, I can't give you the context because I, I it was 11 years ago you know yeah. sorry my brain wasn't f finished being made <laughs> at the time so <laughs> like i wasn't fully developed i'm very sorry but yeah. like you know and you'll be pleased to know i don't really believe that like I don't, yeah. I don't i don't know what you're expecting from me to say like it's it is just that because like the i think the one that always common for me is that um i don't really watch much youtube uh nowadays um to be honest uh I, but the, the community that i'm most involved in is like vloggers and beauty gurus mm -hmm. and you will know about this because there's a huge scandal the tatty westbrook and james oh Charles. hell yeah i was fucking all over that and uh i remember i remember thinking to myself like this is a grown woman right uh tatty westbrook. i don't know how old she is but she's a grown woman she's like, yeah she's like in her 30s i'm pretty 30s, sure yeah she's in her 30s and and, and james charles is a kid right mm -hmm. and now i'm not going to try and defend the guy because there are certain parts of his personality that are really off-putting i'll fucking but I remember... defend him. he got absolutely <laughs> fucking destroyed yeah. for fucking I, I nothing yeah, I, I remember thinking, like, there are certain things that, like, he might have said, like, at a dinner party, like, he was talking about how the waiter was cute and he'd like to have sex with him. It's like, I don't, he's like 18 years old at this point. And he also like, hooked he's... up with that waiter later on, so it doesn't yeah, even matter. Like, later on. I was it's like... like, I just, I couldn't, it was mind blowing to me. This kid was like, and you go onto, like, Social Blade, which is the worst word. Like all time, by the way, and like you'd see his like real time subscribers dropping. It's like James Charles is over. Uh, James Charles is cancelled. He's like losing like two million subscribers in like two days. And, and all thinking... the celebrities unfollowed him, like Ariana Grande, yeah. Ariana, like all he, he he built that Bradley portfolio. Bennett. Like like he he spent so long and had so much like commitment and like was actually just genuinely worth all of that following. And then it just goes just like that. And he never got it. He's never gotten back to that either in terms of his like social influence. Like I, I'm sure his numbers have recovered. And that he's doing incredibly well for himself and that like this yeah. doesn't but like kylie jenner isn't gonna re-follow him now no, of like... course not. but like you, you go from like this kid that's 18 years old and you're expecting him to like be this mature 40 year old man yeah like and you're expecting this guy to not ever put a foot wrong yeah. and the second the second he slips up people are on it like shit like like that's it like and that, that's what i feel like like influencers have that fear of not me because obviously i'm not famous or anything but like they're, they're, always, they're always living in fear of like they make one slip up or one tweet gets discovered from like seven years ago when they were like 10 and suddenly like that's it their career is over you mm -hmm. know and it's unbelievable that like this, this whole kind of culture of again the cancel culture if you will is is able to dictate someone's whole life over tweets from like seven eight years ago when they weren't even an adult and they also and don't want... like they don't take into context that like the world like the like the context of those words has even changed, right? Like, in 2011, it was okay to say faggot. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. Like, that obviously doesn't make it okay, but it it, it definitely, like, excuses, like, you know, 90% of the um, instances of people having used that word in 2011. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's it's, it's like the idea of, like, um, someone... I mean, for example, the, 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 the one that I always bring up is uh, uh, mixed race is what we would call someone um which is ethically okay to say mixed race that yeah. is that is pc as far as I'm concerned yeah of course when we were growing up uh you, and i don't i don't even know if i can use the term on this podcast is it half gonna, cast? yeah yeah someone's yeah. gonna recall me saying that say like, oh don't just said half cast. in, in well, ireland i would i would say about 90 percent of people in ireland still use that term because oh really yeah yeah well like we've <laughs> we've how i only learned on fucking off topic forum like two years ago <laughs> that 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 that's fucking terrible do you know what i mean yeah. like and, and like, I'll, I'll admit this too, like, this is like full on the cognitive bias that exists in, in this kind of space, right? As soon as I learned that, I went to work and the next week, um, the manager called someone half cast and I thought to myself, what a fucking, con I cannot believe that he fucking <laughs> said that. Like, I only fucking learned it like two yeah. weeks ago and all of a sudden I'm on my high horse. Like, now I didn't do anything with that information, yeah. but in my head, that's how it was until I like thought to myself like, well, hold on a second now, Elden Ear, you <laughs> stupid cunt. <laughs> yeah, I, 
I just love the idea. Like he's he doesn't give he doesn't get given the same pass though. Like you know he hasn't learned it and therefore he's a racist. Exactly. Like, yeah, he, yeah. He's not informed on it and therefore yeah, he's he hasn't a racist. reached like, the intellectual plane that I have. Like he hasn't gone out there, you know, and obtained <laughs> this information by living in the real world. <laughs> it's just like the idea of just someone like saying that to someone. Or like, uh, oh, you know, she's a half caste woman, and then someone saying, "You fucking scumbag! You can't yeah. say half caste. It's mixed race." Well, how did you find out? Oh, I found out two weeks ago on Twitter. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Like you know, well, I haven't been exposed to it yet. Like, how how am I supposed to know? Like, yeah. we all learn that way. Like, it's just, oh, it's weird, man. Like, again, the cancel culture is just crazy. Like, people are so fucking desperate to like um take someone down and 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 basically just destroy someone's life without giving them the opportunity opportunity to learn from like uh, previous mistakes yeah and I, I i can't get with that because to me I, i've always believed that like i mean we're getting really off the grid here but i don't even know what the fucking podcast topic was supposed to be it was supposed to be like, about bernie so... sanders and what you thought oh, really? his chances were of securing well, the democratic <laughs> let me get to that in five minutes time. yeah but, uh, no but i mean um like uh forgotten what i was gonna say there <laughs> so let me discuss the bernie sanders part. <laughs> So basically, <laughs> Iowa caucus super important this year. <laughs> but I mean, like, I feel like people are just so desperate, like, to to destroy someone, like, because I, I, that's the point. Like, I, I believe that all humans are, like inherently good, right? I've got this belief that we are all good, and it's 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 our uh, it's our environmental background and our upbringing that like causes us to turn bad. Um, I believe that when a human being is born, they don't they're not born with a set of morals or a set of values but it's you know they, they can tell right from wrong in most cases yes there are going to be gray areas but for the most part they, they can tell right from wrong and we all start off inherently believing in the things that are right but now we're at this point in life especially due to social media where it seems like people would rather uh, not victimize but they would rather have someone as a hate figure than trying to help them become a better person and I don't really like that. The idea of, you know, this person said something homophobic six or seven years ago, they can never be forgiven ever again. Yeah. And and the idea that, like, that person is a bad person because of a homophobic tweet. No, it's not as black and white as that, you know. Um, I don't know where I'm going with this point. So Do if you, you want to jump in it, um, Remember in 2012, I think it was. <laughs> what, uh... you tweet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> When you called me a retard, well, <laughs> this is the police. Um, no, nah, um, Eurogamer uh, Gaming Expo was this like big thing that a lot of the FIFA community people went to, and um, KSI was there, and he made some like uh, sexist remarks to women at the time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and so yeah, yeah. Um, this is all like it's kind of interesting because there was a journalist called Ian Miles Chung. Um, I think he went by the name still gray or something. He worked for gamer ranks right. at the time and he was like spearheading this fuck KSI movement. This guy's a piece of shit and all. And I kind of knew KSI. Like, um, I would say he probably doesn't know who I am. Um, but I like, you know, met him a bunch of times, like hung out with him then. Um, at uh at the expo and i was given the full context for who he was and like this guy was there was basically two like superstars at the eurogamer expo there was tom syndicate and there was ksi and all the companies that were there all the the networkers all the marketing companies everybody was hanging around ksi and syndicate and and ksi was basically treated like a fucking god there like everywhere he went everyone knew his name like and that includes like there's a fucking like samsung stand there and the girls at the samsung stand there are primed to be like oh hey ksi come check out this product or whatever like everyone's trying to show something to him and so um he's talking to those like the showgirls or whatever the, whatever the fuck they are those girls that are just basically paid to look really nice while they walk around um and he said like some lewd things to them like oh can i fucking motorboat your tits or like stuff like that oh yeah, um, yeah. but like so in the context of that whole weekend 
he kind of more or less had a license to do that. Like, I'm not saying that it's right. Uh, and like, I uh, would have a very hard time like standing over this, you know, in a, <laughs> I don't think that this is good kind of way. And I, if you were to come at me with like a lot of things about KSI's character, I'm not really sure where I draw the line between like, this is shocking and it's done very well for his career. Like, does he mean it? Like, is this damaging negative or, you know, whatever. Um, but this shit with the like got taken so fucking far out of context and Ian Miles Chong was like alright crucify this guy fuck him um, and then like several years passed and now Ian Miles Chong is like an alt-right adjacent anti-political correctness wow. guy who would like look back at that time and be like oh well everyone was being completely out of line here KSI can fuck whoever he wants in the streets I don't even care if he has consent or not <laughs> you know what I mean but back then he was like super fucking um super like the PC police and it's I don't know it's so funny to me but I remember at the time just being so pissed off at Ian Miles Chung for um like trying to white knight the whole situation and then there was this other guy i forget his name it was matt something who made a video he was like a uh reasonably popular like um gaming journalist i guess he had a youtube channel i really can't fucking remember the guy's name but he made a video um it was like eight minutes long where he just tried to destroy ksi in it and all he did was just express disgust at him like he didn't bring any like facts or like he didn't you know um even point to the implications of ksi's behavior and it was all just it was so blatantly obvious that they just weren't really happy with the fact that this guy was popular because he might not be a good influence on people but no one was able to articulate that point they were all just like fuck this guy he tried to <laughs> rape a girl or you know like just completely out of context and yeah it was it was a bad time fifa community used to be a fucking sewer to be honest yeah. with you like so a... well not much has changed but i mean <laughs> No, I mean like uh like the the community, like I, I don't really like get that involved in it, to be honest. No, um yeah. but I, I I do feel like there was um when you go back to that time, I do feel like there was more of a unification sort of feel to it. Like um everyone kinda like stuck up for each other and whatnot and it was more supportive than it was to, compared to now. Yeah, um, that's true. But, but I do, I, I do, I do remember that kind of scandal because uh, the thing that I remember most is seeing the video and the girl is there and she's quite a um buxom girl if you will <laughs> and um the ksi says you know can i motivate you and she gives permission and whatnot and then like it just gets blown so far out of proportion yeah and um i just remember thinking like to myself like this this is a non-story why are they trying to make something out of it yeah like why 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 is why is this like the 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 story of discussion why is this the topic of discussion not how amazing it is that the gaming community on youtube is growing so goddamn quick that <laughs> or that a, a gamer got time... to motorboat a girl <laughs> <laughs> it's just great like it's just really really strange like and again i think it does come from that kind of like uh, the thing that's always strange to me is how like people expect to be able to like uh give an objective opinion on it when they'll never be in the same sort of situation and have the same sort of reference point mm. like that guy i've already forgotten his name ian miles chong or whatever i think hold on i let me just real quickly make sure that i'm talking about the <laughs> same fucking guy i almost certainly am yeah, just, just... ian miles chong still at uh, still gray yeah yeah that's the guy yeah. yeah like i just i like with all due respect to the guy like i don't like know who he is but like, like obviously i'm sure his lifestyle and ksi's lifestyle they're not comparable like there's a very little comparison between the two like you can't re there's very little um not comparison there's very little similarity between the two lifestyles there's probably there's probably different age groups as well because ksi that age was what 18 19 yeah yeah uh, very, very he's, young. he's still technically a kid really mm -hmm. and um <laughs> you're sitting there as if to say like you know this is absolutely absurd behavior and you know no right-minded person would do this and all that sort of shit and it's like the lifestyle that he's living he's being regarded as like some fucking like you said earlier, like some kind of fucking god mm-hmm like the event is set up for him to basically have free reign to do what he wants, you know. Yeah. And you're trying to act as if like he should have this kind of like standpoint where he goes in there like acting all humble and shit. Like even though he's been given free reign to act out of character and act very exaggerated, yeah, like and, his it, whole and it's his, is based upon it's his brand exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like he's like KSI is not a kind of like sit down and chat kind of youtuber yeah, like he's but, a fucking yeah, ksi is not syndicate like you know that they're two completely different like that's the it's, it's just weird that like 
you know, his his sort of MO, if you will, is him being exaggerated and very, very sort of loud and very, you know, just acting out, if you will. There's an event set up for him to do those exact things, which people watch him for, and you're expecting him to walk around with a straight face being like, oh, cool, that girl's got nice 36 double D tits, I'm just going to sit there, you know, I'm not <laughs> do anything like it. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Like, he's just going to, like, you know, interview the girl on, you know, whether he thinks that fucking... Joe Biden should be the next president, or whatever. Like, he's, <laughs> yeah. it's not his character. He's not. Do you know what I mean? He's not like yeah. a fucking political columnist. He's a fucking gaming YouTuber that's known for being far out. Like, what I did don't you, know. Um, what did you make of the the whole like transition to boxing shit? Like, uh, so I, it's interesting you point that out because I was having a discussion with a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago about this and we were both uh, had distant, different contrasting opinions but I think that as far as I'm concerned sport is entertainment and business it, it is not just purely who is the best anymore and, and that's just how it is there are certain people that will still have like a hardcore following of boxing and I can see why they will be disappointed in the way that it's sort of been set up and how big the crowds are but you think about how many casual viewers watched that and bought for that on pay-per-view compared to how many people would watch like i don't know who the heavyweight champion of the world is but i know ksi beat logan paul in a boxing match mm-hmm. like for the casual viewer it's more entertaining for me to watch that i didn't watch it because again i don't watch ksi or logan paul but let's just say hypothetically i did because most people do watch one of the two um it's more entertaining for the average viewer to watch KSI versus Logan Paul than it is to watch, uh, I'm trying to think of, now forgive me if these two aren't heavyweights and whatnot, but Tyson Fury versus, uh, 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 I don't even know, Anthony David, Joshua. Uh, Anthony Joshua, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because cause the fact of the matter is, like, I mean, those, okay, so those two names probably aren't the best example because they are quite big, but there are a lot of boxing names that don't have that big of a following on social media. These guys have got fucking reach is combined of like 50 million or whatever yeah like it's it's just pure entertainment like no one is no one is watching that fight and saying oh you know what i think ksi could give anthony joshua a bit of a run for his money like no one is watching that fight with that opinion like watching it and marking down where logan paul didn't have his guard up and shit it's just fun it's just entertainment you know yeah. and i i don't understand the outrage for it like nah, it I mean, purely you know. it, it purely is a bit of fun and for business it's like these two guys can't have of a boxing fight and monetize it why not like it damages the sport of boxing how did like, um w- when they do the fucking uh the charity football game every year where they get a bunch of celebrities and put them against a bunch of legends oh, like well, does yeah. that fucking degrade the sport of football yeah. like oh it oh, ruins the oh. inter- like if you if you think that uh the integrity of boxing is harmed by two guys hosting an exhibition match Wait till you hear about the history of boxing. <laughs> like, <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I don't think that the integrity of the sport is actually your priority here, sir. Like, Yeah, it is It is mental, like, the idea that, like, it, it is literally just a novelty. It is just for fun. Yeah. Like, there is KSI... Like, does anyone seriously think that KSI has, you know, an intention of leaving the entertainment industry behind and going into professional boxing? Like, he might fancy himself in a few professional fights, and that'll be fun to watch, but it's mm-hmm. purely, really, for entertainment. That's yeah. what the fight was. It's not, it's not Logan Paul putting out a shout-out that he's next in line for the throne. It's him cashing in on his massive social media following yeah. alongside someone else that's doing the same. And who's the guy? Eddie, is it Eddie Hearn that set it all up? Could like, be. He, he's the guy that's... Yeah, maybe, I don't know. But he's the guy that's milking it. And, and I, the idea that it, it damages the, the sport of boxing is just really strange it's like what so what if they like like what like if it was like a if it was like an undercard fight maybe i could see like why that could be damaging to the yeah. sport in some way because it's not fair on like people that have dreamed of being boxers but instead you've just got two youtubers to ah, fight fucking before the main shove of- it up here bollocks though like he, he... I th- it's the same with fucking like um the Conor McGregor Floyd Mayweather stuff and everyone's like ah oh, it makes a mockery of this. like no it's super fucking interesting for people to watch especially yeah, those who are not able to fucking judge like what is the actual skill of a boxer like what makes a boxer good at what he does like here's something that casts more eyes on the sport in general like I now know that there's a a very very strong difference between MMA and boxing like obviously on the <laughs> way, but like ha- having the context of seeing the best versus the best 
at their respective sports like it's super fucking interesting and so um the ksi logan paul thing like <laughs> they can do whatever they fucking want michael buffer is in there fucking announcing them on their way to the ring like just fuck off like you know uh, it's it's like the, 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 the whole integrity thing is what gets me it's like did the harlem globetrotters then disrespect the integrity of basketball yeah you know? like... <laughs> that's not a real that's one of those things where they're just coating their their argument like they're hiding like what they act like or they're just not able to say what they actually think like it's not a position that they've ever taught true very well like i don't know it's 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 a strange thing because it's sort of like the same thing as um oh uh they should concentrate on career mode instead of women like it what you're saying is like I don't really want women in the game for reasons that I'm not really prepared to actually examine in any way but my knee jerk reaction is no and uh, the thing I'm going to justify it with is that they should actually work on the thing that I want in the game <laughs> like it's just this this new thing doesn't serve me therefore I don't care about it you know yeah absolutely 100% <laughs> yep no doubt <laughs> thanks <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can rest Cena. easy now. <laughs> <laughs> I had a point uh, regarding the Logan Paul fight, but I kind of forgot it as you were like tailing off towards the career mode point, and that's uh, why I lost my uh, ability to react to what you were saying. There. So, so it's my <laughs> fault that you can't. Podcast. I see how it is. I can't articulate. Yeah. Um... No, I think. Um... Again, again, I do want to get off this horse a little bit here, but I think, I think again, the integrity thing is the most confusing part of it because the, these guys are trying to stay relevant, right, for as long as they can to make as much money as they possibly can throughout the course of their careers. So they're going into a different avenue, and I don't see the harm in doing that. It's like, like when, um, do you remember there was a phase a few years ago when YouTubers started releasing diss tracks? Yeah, fuck you, yeah. Was that damaging to the music industry? Was that the sort of thing where like damaging oh, to my eardrums? God. <laughs> Rap, rap music now has got no integrity because KSI did a diss track. Like, yeah, oh yeah. my god, fucking hell. It's Pusha like, T's diss track against Drake Christ. now means less because AA9 Skills exactly. made his own rap song. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's just fucking hell. It's just a way for people to make money for longer in different avenues. Like, yeah. come on, man. Like, it's not a fucking. Like, you are not killing the sport of boxing by showing KSI versus Logan Paul on Skybox Office. Like,. The way you, the way the way the boxing would be dying a slow death is if nothing interesting was happening. Yeah, you know? like would be if your this. sport was fucking painful to watch for anybody. Yeah, yeah uh, it's know. a it's a strange, it's a strange one. So anyway, so about Bernie Sanders. Yes. So, um, <laughs> obviously, all eyes are on Iowa. Um, there's a lot. Oh. There's a you know we have Elizabeth Warren also. Um, yeah. It's, Pretty, you know, Everything that, yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, Virginia and stuff, yeah. yeah. Democrats and Republicans. Yeah. That's that's correct. Yes. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. Do you want my opinion on like the American election, like with Democrats and stuff? So, like, obviously, because as we know, there's an election every four years. So four years ago, there was an election in 2016, and uh, Donald Trump won. So now there is an election this year, and there's a lot of talk on who's going to be a Democratic leader. Now, a lot of people think it's going to be Bernie Sanders. Now, if you just give me 30 seconds to Google the other nominees... Well, I slow down. Like... A lot of what you said is wrong. There is no Donald Trump. That's a hologram. <laughs> <laughs> I am so politically in- uninformed, it's unbelievable. I have no fucking clue what's going on with Brexit. I don't have a clue. Have we even left the European Union? I don't know. I think you I leave think... Uh, for the listeners today. Um... Uh... God, I have no fucking clue what's going on. Who's Bernie Sanders? <laughs> he's um. No, I know Bernie Sanders. I'm just joking. I was gonna oh, make a joke that like he's uh he's the method man of politics or something, you know, something along those lines. So. He's a career mode YouTuber. <laughs> he's a career mode YouTuber. Yeah. <laughs> he tweeted this when he was 15. Um. Oh dear. But no. Um. So politics, politics, politics. What do you want to know? Because as you know, I'm a very politically informed person and. If you want to talk about my opinions, and I'm more than welcome to give them. Um, if you want to talk about them, or if you want to talk about Brexit, um, you know, I'm more... <laughs> <For sake. laughs> let's just go straight to the moon landings, like we discussed. Right. 
Yeah, um, can we just get back to conspiracy theories? Because that, you know... I well, know are you going to talk about how the Jews are ruling the world again? Because, like, you did that for, like, an hour and a half before I pressed record. <laughs> and I was hoping that none of that would seep into this episode, you know what I mean? So it's, uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, nah. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. I, I listened to a lot of, um twitch debates between um po- political like political youtubers like not like analysts or commentators like just fucking straight up like alt-right versus like socialist type debates and are oh, they just give me endless entertainment and uh it's it's, it's, cause... it's like an illness that i have yeah. <laughs> to be honest <laughs> it's slowly oh, dear. i love the idea of like having like someone that's alt left and then someone that's like, alt left is that a thing? No, like someone that's really. like mega left, like f- full on left and then someone that's like alt right, like putting them together in a room and expecting the other one to say, actually oh, you make a good point now. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's but it's so stupid because like there are so many you have things that, like, like where they'll actually agree. Like most people on the alt right um oppose things like um American exceptionalism or uh, fucking... They don't want to be involved in any wars. That's, like, a big one. They like, I don't know. There's, like, a weird point where their opinions can align on things. And it's... Um, even the same with, like, uh, feminists and um, men's rights activists. Like, the, the incels, right? The red pill people. Yeah. Everything that they have to say about, like, what's terrible for men in society are things that, like... A, a very large chunk of feminists would actually agree with. It's just that the framing of it tends to be completely different. Like, they kind of actually do ultimately want the same thing. Um, well, generally speaking, obviously a lot of the people who say they're men's rights activists are actually misogynists, but um, I don't know. It's it, it, it would be really good if people could actually talk about things and not be completely fucking buried in just this weird type of uh, hostile division. But um, that's just... That's just one man's opinion, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You, you lost me on uh, Intel. What's an Intel? Um. Well, you know Microsoft Excel. <laughs> so an Intel is nothing no? like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh. Yeah. It is a person who is involuntarily celibate, and they believe that um something has happened like, in society. Like exactly celibate. <laughs> celibate is when <laughs> you celibate this and a bit of that. Um. Oh, but they they believe that like um the breakdown of the <laughs> traditional family uh has resulted in women having too much power and now guys like them don't get sex anymore because they have nothing of value to offer women and women hold all the cards in the dating game now and it's um oh it's really dark it's a death cult is what it is all right what's a cult no i'm just kidding <laughs> jeez Oh man, you know, like when I uh, when we were talking, because um, for the listeners they wouldn't know this, but when we were talking about like uh, me coming on this podcast, I did actually say to you last night, I am probably going to be the stupidest guest you've ever had, and I remember you were trying to downplay that. I think like an hour into this podcast, not even an hour in, ten minutes in, they probably thought actually that's about right. That's about Jack right. Brown has been on this podcast many times. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I love Jack Brown. Jack Brown. Yeah, I ain't, I ain't heard from Jack Brown in ages. I love Jack Brown too. Um, we not a lot of people know this, but I know who Jack Brown is. So yeah, Jack Brown. <laughs> what is the chances? <laughs> yeah. Oh dear, you should have got Jack Brown back for this podcast, man. He would have been a much more interesting guest. I uh, I don't really talk to him that much anymore. <laughs> he wasn't available. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nah, not really. Like we only kind of talk when. Well, some like, we have like a few shared interests that, like you know, if Blink One Eight Two release a new album, we'll talk about that or um. I don't know, but um, he, I feel like he just, me and him have both, at around the same time, we're like, oh, we have, um, like, adult lives now that we try and and live, even though I wouldn't consider either of us an adult, but, mm-hmm. um, I don't know, we just have, like, a lot of different interests and stuff, but um, right. I do enjoy having him on the podcast, because he is a goldmine for, you know, sound bites. <laughs> Yeah, whereas with me, you're just scraping the barrel, really. Very much. Just making do. Well, I was, um, I was listening back to one episode because I was trying to find uh, this thing that Lewis Moore said. It's a long story to do with my tweet earlier on today, um, and I, I couldn't find what fucking episode it was. But at one stage, I said something like, uh, "I said something like, yeah, I, I went, um, 
I drew from the same well once again, or I went to the to the well once again. You know that saying where it's like you're going back to that same old well. You know that saying? No. no okay. Well, it's the same. Is that even a saying? Yeah. No, it definitely no. is. Um, and I said that, and Jack Brown goes, "Yeah, your well of shit." <laughs> <laughs> It's like such a fucking idiot, like Neanderthal thing to say. <laughs> I don't know. He's just. Oh man, he's a, banter, he's, banter, edgy banter. Love it. Yeah, I yeah. wouldn't even go so far as to describe it as edgy. It's just, it's moronic and fucking. Yeah. You know, in Peep Show, when they go to the club, to the gay club, and um, the guy is like, "This DJ's a genius. He's bringing it up. He's bringing it down." And Mark, oh, yeah. Mark goes. This guy's a genuine moron. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, what dear. I feel like. He, he goes, he goes on that fantastic writing episode as well when he's like, um, he 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 get he get kicks everyone out in the morning. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, can't we just chill, man? No, you can't. You've been chilling long enough. This is reality calling. <laughs> yeah, he just goes on this fucking amazing rant, like how it's like not all the government conspiracy and like you know, <laughs> he's like he yeah. says something like. And a little pill with chicken on it isn't going to change that. Now, now come on. fuck off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. Peep show is so fucking good. I it's come full circle. When Jez goes, um, oh, why did you have to bring Daryl? It's <laughs> boring. And Mac is like, what? Because he doesn't go around with a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I forget the other thing that he says. He's like, he goes, he's uh, yeah, he's grab a hair and an iPod oh, and a strap on. <laughs> strap on? It's an example. It's an example. <laughs> oh, man. oh my god! Oh, there's a classic uh, bit in that episode as well when um, he discovers Daryl's a racist at the um, at the uh, uh, German Nazi reenactment thing. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Daryl goes something like, all we're saying is we want a racially pure Europe. And then there's like a, a customer there or whatever. And Mark's like, and then Daryl goes, uh, I'm in character. And he's like, oh, right. Yeah. Uh, Germany for the Germans and that stuff. And then the next scene, he goes like, all we're saying is rights for the whites. And Mark's like, is this is this real? No. <laughs> he's trying to work out whether it's actual real. It's brilliant. Oh, man. Yeah. What an episode. Peep Show is fucking class. Do you know what we should have done for the last two hours? Just talk about Peep Show. We should like I would really enjoy it if all the listeners went and watched every episode of Peep Show because I'm currently rewatching it and it's just so fucking joyous. I watch it like once a year and it's like the best time of year, you know. It, it is fun. There's just so many brilliant little moments in that as well. Like it's just like the same episode, the very same. That's the point. It's the same as there's so many brilliant memorable bits. Like when uh, Mark's trying to like figure out whether what Daryl was saying was racist to Jez and he's saying I might pop down to the yeah, yeah. and just. It's like, uh, no, mate. What about the? And they, I'm not even gonna say the word. Yeah, like the yeah. PAKI shop. They've always got that what box on in there. It's just like, what the hell are you talking about? Yeah. And he goes, yeah. And, and Mark's like, that's not yeah, on, really. If you say those sort of things, yeah. If you say those sort of things, you're a racist, aren't you? And just like, well, yeah. And I suppose, <laughs> and I suppose you don't think there's a global Jewish conspiracy in control of the world. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> I like it when Mark talks to Daryl and he's like, well, look, it's just all of this stuff. And uh, and Daryl goes, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, you talk me around now. Oh. Have I? Fuck off, thought police. police. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, hands in that episode as well. We said that earlier when he's like, um, oh, what? No, because we work. It's not all right for me to smoke a bit of crack. It's, yes, hands, exactly. <laughs> I saw this tweet yesterday that was like, um, what is a joke in a film or um, TV show that you think about all the time but none of your friends do? And I have two. One of them is from Peep Show when they're recording for the... <laughs> My hands goes, uh, what we need to do, right, is create a powerful sense of dread. <laughs> <laughs> but after that, when he, what I said earlier, where the guy goes, right, there's 15 minutes to go. I'm just going to pop out for a cigarette, if that's all right. And Hans is like, well, if you are leaving now, don't fucking think about coming back. <laughs> I think about it, like, oh, literally so every good. single day. I think about him <laughs> saying that and how fucking hilarious it is. But, like, none of my friends ever find it funny. Like, I can never recall it successfully so that they all laugh at it. Like, it's so fucking annoying. Yeah, it's a hand, hands is brilliant. He's got so many fucking brilliant one lines. There's a bit when uh, he meets 
Mark in a pub and they're talking about sabotaging Jez and Nancy's wedding because it's a sham. Yeah. And uh, Mark goes to uh, Hans, he goes, so super Hans, what have you been up to? And Hans goes, oh, it's you know, long weekend. Staring into the mirror, and Mark yeah. goes, "All right, soul searching, yeah. right? Okay, Mark, okay." <laughs> it's just funny. Oh no, yeah. Mary's been sectioned. <laughs> Fucking hell, who's hey. next? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck's a washing machine doing in a pub? Oh, I need a pint. <laughs> I am not co-managing a pub called the Swan and Pea. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's a deal, bro. For me. No, it was free the vetoes. Oh, that's it. Oh. Uh, oh dear. How about a compromise? The swan and pedo. <laughs> oh, we should move off peep show. It's too much. Uh, God, I don't want to get to like because it comes up in my YouTube recommended, and um, I don't want to get to clips that I haven't seen yet because I'm so excited to go back over them. I think I'm oh, starting God. season four tonight. So. Oh, classic! It's... The first episodes with uh, Sophie's pair parents in uh, the farm i actually watched that a few nights ago and oh that's fantastic yeah uh the bit in there it's just like no 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 don't 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 don't, 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 don't. okay but it's fantastic oh my god (laughs) what a fucking show the the best part of peep show for me is when um jez is like doing all the taboo sex stuff with nancy yeah and um of course he marks a conservative guy so (laughs) nancy like puts jez in blackface Yeah, yeah And he's like, and she goes, you can't imagine your mom having sex with a black man. Yeah, no, because it's when she goes through all the stuff, like, we're breaking the last taboo. I thought that this was important. This is what you wanted, Jez. And she turns around and goes, now fuck me and pretend I'm your mom. Yes. (laughs) But the best part of that is when he's like, I'm sorry, Nancy, I can't do it. And he just walks out in full (laughs) black. And the camera pans to Mark reading the paper. (laughs) And he just looks at Jez and Jez just shakes his head and walks. Oh. I know. I can't. I can't get over how good that show is, man. Like it's just there are just so many bits in that that are just brilliant. And the fucking the the, the bit I told you that's my favourite. The bit I told you earlier with the um sorry I should say before we came on air we spent about half an hour remembering peep show quotes. Mm. My favourite bit is the um the, the bit where Jez, uh, Mark's talking to Sophie about his dream job of being his history walk guy, and so and he thinks Sophie's going to tell him to turn it down. So he says, "No, I think you should do it. When our child is born." I, I don't want him to look at the face of a man who's hated himself and his life for 40 years. And Mark just goes, mustering dad. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's this... I was, um... You know the movie Forgetting Sarah Marshall? Oh, I know what you're going to say about bits in that movie. Because you told me this years ago uh, about bits in that movie which are funny but no one else finds funny. And you're going to say about when that... Well, you'd say it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> I can't, like, nobody fucking understands why this is so funny. And, like, I don't think that I necessarily do either, but it's just, it's such a, like, there's, there are, like, things about the worlds that you create when you're writing um, scripts or whatever that just get added in as, like, this extra layer for people who watch hard enough or watch close enough or whatever. But, like, Russell Brand's character is, like, he's this complete, like, he's a pretentious musician guy. He has, like, there's one point where his girlfriend um, uh, completely, like, destroys him when she's, like, this tattoo here, this is this is Buddhist, like, this is uh, Hindu. That doesn't make you a citizen of the world. It makes you full of shit. Because, like, he's so fucking pretentious and so up himself. And all his music is, like, we got to yeah. do something for uh, dying kids and stuff. <laughs> and um, he's, like, out on a surfboard with... Um, yeah. the main guy played by Jason Siegel, whose name I Instagram, absolutely yeah. cannot fucking remember and I literally watched this movie last night and I've seen <laughs> it about 100 fucking times and I can't remember what the fucking guy's name is but um, yeah like Aldous Snow is on his uh, surfboard and uh, Jason Siegel is on his and um, <laughs> Aldous, uh, uh, Jason Siegel finds out that Aldous Snow was fucking his girlfriend for like a year before she even broke up with him <laughs> And he's, like, so angry, but he's also just a very nice guy. So he just starts, like, um, using his hand to throw water on Russell Brand because they're in the ocean. And Russell Brand's response is, like, Ah, oh, come on, what about the code of the ocean? <laughs> like, <laughs> just this fucking, like, 
Because he's such a fucking hippie, like, he thinks he can just, like, clever, like, oh, the code of the ocean. Oh, I can't explain it, but it fucking kills me every time I watch it. And I try and bring it up to, fr- like, I have another friend who's seen the movie as many times as I have. And, like, he knows that I like to quote it, but he just doesn't find it as funny as I do. And it's actually really fucking weird because um, I was with, uh, I think the first time I saw that movie, I was with Cal Freezy, of all the fucking people in the universe. Wow. I watched it with him, and um, <laughs> he he found that part fucking hilarious as well. And, like, I'm willing to bet yeah. a lot of money that there's no way he remembers that. How- <laughs> he probably doesn't <laughs> even remember who I fucking am. But, um... <laughs> Yeah, just uh, no, because I remember it because I remember you telling me about it before I watched the movie. You said there's a bit in it you won't find it funny, but I find it fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah and oh god, now every time I watch it, that's the bit I remember the most. And oh, obviously, right. wedding in Hawaii, real original. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there's so many like uh, it's a fucking incredible film. Like, it it's is great, so well written. It is a great movie. I, I really wish like fucking Netflix would get on their fucking shit and actually start putting good movies on there because like there's barely anything on there right now that's anything good. Who cares? Seasons one to eight of Peep Show are on it, so you don't fucking. No, that's true. As long as that don't get taken off, I'm golden. Yeah. But uh, oh my god, what a show! What a show, Peep Show is, man. I could I could literally spend all fucking night going over bits that are just absolutely fucking hilarious to me. It's just oh my god, it's just so. She, the writing is just absolutely genius and I think that it's amazing to me because like a lot of people think that like Americans don't get British comedy and they don't understand it but I don't think that's true at all I, I don't think that's true, that's true at all but what I will say is just that like um, have you watched the American version of The Office? Yeah yeah it's it's vastly superior to the original. Do you think that like the the difference that the main difference between it is that the American Office is more kind of like I don't, I don't want to say jokey but more sort of like it, it seems like it's more set up um, I so I I see what you're saying, but I don't think that that's I don't think that that really comes into effect until like maybe season five or something like that. Like mm-hmm. I think that season obviously seasons one and two are just shot for shot remakes. Um, but like I Pretty think the it. show really fucking comes into its own once they shed the the old thing and they you know start to kind of build from the ground up. And I think it it just gets a lot. I don't know, like, I think it seems complete. There's some stuff, like, when Michael Scott follows the sat-nav into the lake. Like, that's very... I, I can't... I have no... Like, I can't watch that and be like, ah, right, that's the thing that yeah, happened. Yeah, but, yeah. But, like, Dwight... One of the best fucking things that I have ever seen in any TV show ever is... Man, my sense of humor is so, like, just... I, I find the less funny things to be absolutely hilarious and the most funny things to be like, eh. But, um, when Dwight goes and he meets fucking, um... Oh, what is the girl's name? Who, uh, Jan? Um, he he goes to meet Jan about maybe taking over Michael's job, and um, when he comes back, Michael f- uh, has found out about it, and Michael's like, "Where were you?" And Dwight is like, "The dentist." And <laughs> oh, Michael's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What, "What's your dentist's name?" And Dwight goes, <laughs> "Crentist." And Michael's like, "Your dentist's name is Crentist." That's so weird. And Dwight goes, perhaps that's why he chose that profession. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so fucking funny to me. Like, stuff like that, that seems, like, so organic and real to me. Like, not, like, the, the bigger set pieces are, like, obviously pretty fucking ridiculous. But stuff like even, um, like, Jim's idea to, um, like, he's fooling Dwight into thinking some outrageous thing, like, that there's radioactivity all over the office and he goes to the microwave and puts in the bag of popcorn and it pops once like one kernel and then jim comes back and says like look i put this on top of the microwave and it's 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 popped somehow and then dwight is he goes crazy like just all those kinds of things i think that that seems very organic and like natural within the world that they built for the show and like i don't know I, also... I, think, I think you're right there, that the, the, the shedding the skin thing I agree with as well because when, when it was just trying to be like the American version of the British version in the first two seasons it was just too you can't really replicate that mm-hmm. and, and it have the same kind of comedic effect but when it sort of branched out into becoming its own kind of show if that makes sense yeah, I think yeah. that was when it really started to become funny um, but yeah to, to, to me like I, I, I do prefer the British version to the American though and I'm I'm surprised that you you actually prefer the American version to, to the British version. Well, the British um, for there's two reasons for it. Number one is that like every fucking British show 
it has like one episode per season and there's only two seasons so there's only two episodes <laughs> um <laughs> but the other thing is i just absolutely cannot fucking stand ricky gervais uh well yeah and i'm with so you on it's that one. it's I, really I, I hard a huge to gervais fan, man. really yeah I was in the past, yeah. I used to be a huge Gervais fan. Like, he was my favorite comedian. I watched all his stand up and shit. Uh, um, but his earlier work with Merchant, the, the comparison between that. Now, I tried to watch his show Afterlife on Netflix. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you, it's the big, biggest part of shit, man. Like, uh, one of my old co workers was telling me about it. And she was like, oh, it's, 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 it's really, really good. It's real insight because we talked about like, mental health and that. And she was like, it's a real good insight into like depression and that. And like, I remember like just watching a part of it where he meets like a fucking drug addict, but the drug addict is supposed to be kind of like humorous and shit. And it's like, it's so like the idea that it's supposed to be an accurate portrayal of mental health. And it's just so not even close to being remotely realistic. Mm. And it makes me think how are like critics giving this guy like five stars out of five stars when this isn't even close to being real. Like it's not even like part of, Parts of it are very touchy, but like most of it is just so shit. And he's like, "Oh yeah, like he meets this guy in like episode two to like buy heroin off him and that." Uh, and it's just so fucking that the way they portray it seems to be almost kind of like uh, you almost feel like even though a character's supposed to be at his lowest M, you feel like he's got to maintain this kind of like fundamentally like zany view of the world and shit. Mm-hmm. And it just, it turns my stomach because Gervais seems to think now he's this kind of like comedic mastermind and he is just so superior to everyone else and he, he gets it and no one else does. And it, it, it literally, you, you go back and watch an episode of Extras uh, or The Office and you realize that Gervais is just, just like a fucking puppet in it. And like without Merchant, he is nothing. His, his new work is just so shit. He seems to have to like stuff. disowned Merchant as well. Like in... Um, yeah, I've listened that. to. He was on Sam Harris's podcast, and I listened to it, and he just talks about his um, his career trajectory, basically from working in like the fucking storeroom of a radio station or some shit like that, um, to eventually write in the office. And like he didn't credit Merchant once in it, and I thought that was really fucking strange. So I did like. There's basically like a fucking circuit for podcasts nowadays, and if you're on one, you're on all of them. And so I listened to a few other Gervais podcasts, and he didn't even acknowledge Stephen Merchant once, and I just thought. Oh. It was real strange because Merchant, I think I may be wrong in this, but I'm pretty sure he continued um, with creative output in the American office as it went on. Maybe not in every single episode, but I'm pretty sure he still um, contributed in some way to some of the episodes. Um, But I don't know. Like, I think I don't really know enough about it, to be honest. I do think that. Uh, some of the old Gervais skits are sensational, like the Liam Neeson one. Um, oh, that's just, classic. Oh, and yeah. The Ian McKellen one too, and the Patrick Stewart one, and all that. Oh, brilliant! But I just can't fucking stand the man. I just think he is like, uh, oh, are you offended? I don't care if you're offended. <laughs> but like, mm. you do, because you spend all fucking day telling us that you don't care, that you're offended. So you yeah. obviously care, you fucking cunt. And the other thing is that, did you know that he doesn't believe in God? <laughs> oh, wow, really? That's a revelation to me. Oh, no my way God. is he atheist. Oh, my God. I, I would never have guessed. I would yeah. never have guessed. His, his his militant atheism is, like, so apparent even, like, 20 years ago. If you listen to the XFM podcast and the way they fucking, like, bash any kind of, like, organized religion, and it's like he's so desperate to, like, smash any kind of, like, person that believes in it, and it's just like, mate, give it a fucking rest. Uh-huh. Like, seriously, because he continues it now on Twitter. And it's like, I, I don't have a problem with atheism. I consider myself to be agnostic atheist. But it's just the whole kind of approach of like, uh, oh, you believe in God. Uh, you have every right to believe in God. But I have every right to believe that you're a fucking retard. And all yeah, that sort of shit. Know, it's like, yeah. yeah, you do, but you don't need to fucking say it. Like, do you know what I mean? Wait, wait, it's wait. Just... Are you offended? <laughs> Has he offended oh, you? Because he doesn't care. Yeah. If he's... Oh man, I, I just I can't stand those things. Uh, well, I, quite, I, I, I did quite like his ironic Golden Globe speech as well, when he was talking about how um, uh, celebrities should not be using their award speech as a platform to discuss politics and whatnot. 
and like because they don't know enough about the world and they're so far detached from normal working class people and whatnot and it's like you're the exact same whether you like to think it or not that's such a and stupid I just, I can't... like you can't view celebrities as a fucking monolith either like this is like one of the main things that everybody on the right does right now <laughs> and when i say everyone on the right i know i'm treating them as a monolith what i mean is for people who are going to get fucking sensitive about that most of the right-wing political commentators that i see who exist in the kind of um social media sphere you know the likes of ben shapiro and stuff they'll refer to celebrities as uh the hollywood elite and um all they do is virtue signal that's the thing they don't have any actual opinions they're just virtue signaling and it's like you don't fucking know what anybody's opinion about anything is really unless you well not necessarily talk to them but like you can't just say that because somebody lives in hollywood they're um they're a fucking you know far they're a radical leftist green new deal fucking basic income person like it's just so i don't know you can't say oh well he's an actor therefore he doesn't know anything about politics that's really stupid to think mm, yeah the idea of like saying someone can't make a political point in in a speech is just so yeah you I mean, like, do whatever I just don't you understand. fucking want, you know. I know, like, the idea, like, you know, they can't go up there and talk about the sadness of, you know, inequality in America because they're so far away from having to deal with it face to face. What yeah. they can't have an opinion on it, or they can't even discuss how bad it is. Like, so what? should anyone ever talk about anything? Like... Anything ever? Yeah. Like, uh, am I allowed to talk about any kind of issue whatsoever? Because I don't, I'm not directly involved in it. Like, mm. it's just, ah, oh, it's just weird. It, oh. he, he just comes across as a massive cunt nowadays, and I can't stand him anymore either. Like, I used to, I, I still listen to the XFM uh, radio shows, like, occasionally when I'm, like, working or, like, for bed or whatever. Um, but it, it, it's like, I, I can't watch anything the guy's in now because he just, he turns my stomach. Like, mm. I just think about how much of a twat he is, and it takes away any kind of, like, enjoyment for me in his work because i mean for starters i don't think he's even that good of an actor like i i, I think he's i think he's all right but i don't i don't think he's that good and i think gi given the choice between like uh let's say let's say his old work compared to now it's not even comparable it's like he's not grown into a better actor Mm. He's he's not developed his acting skills in any way whatsoever he is he is so fucking basic he, yeah, he, he's just he knows his over. role. Exactly, he he knows his role. He knows what he's good at, and that's it. He has no kind of like sphere of acting talent. It just is he's good at playing a certain character, and that's as far as it goes for him. Mm. Um, and that's my opinion on Ricky Gervais. So, well, that's uh, another thing to mark off the list. Uh, yeah. Um, I think I we should probably end it here though because I have become awake with the hunger and um, my body is shaking. <laughs> I haven't eaten since breakfast, uh, which wow. uh, which for me was at 10 a.m. So uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. I think. Yeah. Um, so, cool. Yeah. You know, I didn't mean anything yeah, by that. Right. But that's just a normal. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. That's that's not an inside joke. That you know. No, it's just yeah. yeah. I certainly didn't get up at 4 p.m. this afternoon to eat breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good to know. That's good to know my life's still going well. Yeah. Uh, Right, well, I've, I've enjoyed being part of your podcast, man. It's been fun. Yeah, it sounds. Yes. Um, it's the enthusiasm with which you say that that makes me believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's been it's been good. I know I've been your most requested guest in a while. I was hoping I didn't let anyone down, but uh... I'm sure everyone will be really angry at your performance here. This might well be the death of me, to be honest. A lot of comments. I'm not sure I'm going to recover like... from this. Um, uh, asking for timestamps for when we start talking about the Iowa caucus. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, well I'm glad I was able to give some very politically informed comments on things. Yes, yes. as well. Um, I definitely think I'm going to be invited on Newsnight next week as well. <laughs> <laughs> Can you fucking imagine? <laughs> I've always like imagined like the idea of me actually going on like. Like a, a satirical news show, like how I got news for you. And like everyone else is cracking jokes, and I'm just sat there for the whole show, not saying a word because I can't think of anything. You know, it's not really good. Like when you imagine yourself in a scenario, but like you're losing in the scenario. It's like, wait a minute, now it's your imagination. You get to do whatever you want to do, but you're so like <laughs> just sat there with a big smile on your face while everyone fucking makes fun of you. Can you kid imagine me on Question Time? 
<laughs> Just imagine me on question time. Oh, man. So, Docs, what do you think about the idea that the BBC are being too liberal with Nigel Farage's involvement on mainstream news shows? Well, I don't really know, to be honest. Well, liberalism left, you know, conservatism <laughs> all, right. All sort of it's, things, they're all, it's a all, matter all of words, left you know, and right. They really... Really... <laughs> I, don't, I don't think necessarily that it's a bad thing. Go on, elaborate. I'd rather not. I'd... <laughs> I'd rather not, I'd rather just leave it that. If the audience want to applaud any time soon, that would be great. Please <laughs> be respect done. my privacy at this time. Do you think that the trans activist movement has gone too far? Uh, I'm not really sure, to be honest. I'd say they haven't gone far enough. Well, not my direct quote, but, you know. Did you see, um... Oh, man. This is, like, a complete side. I, I just, like, you know, 30 seconds. Did you see Monroe Bergdorf uh, talking on Piers Morgan about how all white people are responsible for, like, racism or something like that? No, I know she is, but I did not. It was, um, really, like, really kind of out there, I think. And I really want to support her, but... I feel like she expects me to do things about racism and I'm not really sure what it is that I'm supposed to do. So, um, yeah. like, you know, I'm sorry. Um, and I don't know, like, <laughs> I just don't know what to, like, can you imagine, like, um, if I went up to one of my black friends tomorrow and I was like, listen, um, am I doing enough in the fight against racism for your liking? Like, I, I think that it would actually be genuinely racist if I asked that question. Because I've gone up to yeah, someone based I, on the color of their skin. I've made yeah. an assumption based on the color of their skin. Like, it, it's such a fucking outrageous standpoint to have that every single white person indiscriminately is responsible. Like, <laughs> sorry now for a second, but I just don't see how me, a man in the Republic of Ireland, is responsible <laughs> for a systemic oppression in the United States. Um, I'm sorry that it happens, certainly. Um, and if I have contributed to it in any way, I would gladly take that back. But I'm going to need some details, you know. It's, uh... I love the idea of like being held responsible for that as well. Like, yeah, <laughs> she just calls out every white member of the audience, <laughs> and you're responsible. Yeah. And you're responsible. Trayvon Martin guy because of like, you. Yeah, it's like I want a fucking minute. Like I just walked in. What have I done now? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even put the kettle on for fuck's sake. <laughs> the whole like cis male outrage always gets me as well. The white straight cis male outrage always fucking gets me. I was watching it's like, like I was watching this debate of um this this YouTuber was talking about because uh, I I think one area where I'm not entirely um I haven't gotten like a fully formed position yet is about um trans women competing in female sports because i think that they have some kind of advantage and like it, it seems like it's unfair to me because if you were to separate things by say weight class or testosterone levels or whatever this would put one person at an obvious um disadvantage or advantage over others right um but it's not a fully formed position i i could be wrong like I, i'm not really there yet but i was watching this debate and um one guy was saying that and then this um other this uh it was a trans woman which is not really relevant but she goes um oh and you think you're in a position to decide that a straight white guy and he's like what does me being white have anything to do with this <laughs> <laughs> like oh yeah well i think uh personally they should um you know um uh, set it by testosterone levels yeah well you're white what the <laughs> fuck would you know about testosterone levels in sports <laughs> Shit, man. I oh, can miss that memo. Um, oh, anyways, yeah, no, but I am fucking yeah. starving, so... Yeah. That's right, yeah. I, I best leave it there before I say something very offensive, because I am a straight white male, apparently, so... Well... Uh, oh, God. That's one thing I want to get onto before I leave as well. Like, do you know how fucking hard it is for me to actually, like, talk about issues with, like, sexuality and gender and that as well? Because I've been so fucking LGBT-friendly over the years, I can't say what I even fucking am anymore. Like Jesus Christ! Like I remember, um, I, uh, I, I, I said something uh, on Twitter. I think it was a, a few months ago, and uh, I was talking about. Oh yeah, that's it. That, so I was in hospital a few months ago, and I just want to get on to this point real quick because um, it does make me laugh. So I've always been very like LGBT. Imagine if I just hung up and went to come. <laughs> <food. laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Continue. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, like, so I, I tweeted something, and um, I just said something like, um, so I was in hospital, and um, the nurse that I was with, like, was a pretty cute guy, and I just tweeted, like, um, I can't remember what I tweeted, but it was like, uh, oh, yeah, it's typical that I get, like, a really cute nurse on my ward or something, and some guy just tweeted me and goes, I thought you were gay. <laughs> And I'm like, hang on, what? I just, I just sarcastically tweeted back. I thought you knew that male nurses were a thing. But it's like, it's like I can't even like joke. Like if I came out like as bisexual tomorrow, it's like I lose like, like every person that's like I thought you were gay. Like, it's... <laughs> <laughs> Such a what fucking, never like, clarify. What, yeah, like what, like what if you replied and said no, lol? Like what? What is his comeback to that? Like, oh uh, well, uh, you should be. Uh... It that's the thing. Like I can't, I can't even like say anything because like, <clears throat> I I remember just like tweeting. I just sarcastically said I thought you knew male nurses were a thing, and I was like, well, like, you know, it's, it's cool, man. Like, I wasn't trying to be a dick, but I've dated both sexes. But it's like. I just love the idea because I get it all the fucking time. Like, because uh, I've always been very like, like uh, I wouldn't say like closed. People know that I've had like same sex relationships and that, but I've never gone into detail because I don't think I have to. Mm-hmm. But um, on my channel, like the amount of comments I get from people like saying shit like, uh, "Weird question, but are you gay?" <laughs> and it's like I love the idea that that person is thinking I'm gonna be like, "Yeah, let me just like come out to you in yeah, this yeah, YouTube, yeah. YouTube comment section instead I lo- of doing I love the way they video ask it, like." On a career mode video too, with like weird question. It's just yeah. your uh, your description of Bacali was pretty intense. There, um, are you gay? <laughs> like, you seem to think Adama Traore is a little bit too good of a player. Is that because you're gay? Like, it's such a weird way. Like, why would you fucking ask it there? There's no fucking context for it. It's really fucking weird. Like the amount of times I get asked that sort of question in the comments, like, and I'm not even exaggerating. Like, it's once every like three or four episodes, just one comment someone saying like, um, "I don't mean to be offensive, but is Doc's gay?" Mm. <laughs> like, you just expect me to just reply to it and be like, "Oh, well, here's the thing, man. You know, when I was like 12 years old, I was in the male changing room at PE, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you expect me to like give you like my back." story and like explain my sexuality to you in like a youtube comment section yeah. it's just really fucking weird like i i oh man it plays in my fucking mind because i get asked the question all the fucking time and like i don't know how i go into this i think it's just because of the straight white male stuff i was talking yeah, about but, yeah, uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah but anyway that's uh that's me having to deal with inquisitive teenagers on my sexuality and uh that's my thoughts on Joe Biden and the other bloke, Bernie Sanders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, um, I hope I've been informative. You certainly were. I'm surprised to hear you advocate for Alex Jones um, so passionately. <laughs> but, um, well, as you know, because of a tweet I posted in 2012, I am a massive racist. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. That <laughs> it has now been dug up that I once called someone a faggot. So, I mean, there's no coming back from that now. Like, even if I meant it as a joke, or I meant it as an inside joke, I can't defend that. I am officially screwed. So, I think that's the end of my YouTube career there. And uh, I think from here on out, I will be regarded as a homophobe, so... Well, you had a good There one. we go. <laughs> Alright. Oh, man. Um, to the audience, thank you for listening. To you, Docs, thank you for coming on the show. It has been a long time coming, um, but everybody requested it for so long. Hopefully... They will now stop emailing me. <laughs> <laughs> now they will realize the error of yeah. <laughs> their ways and their poor judgment. Um, but yeah, no, uh, but this, um, this was good. We should do it again sometime. <sighs> yeah, I've, I've enjoyed it. It's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm sorry if I rambled on and exposed my political ignorance. But other than that... Exposed your racism. Yep. Yeah. In a, in a roundabout way, but other than that, it, no, it's been fun. I appreciate you having me on, man, and uh, yeah, look forward to talking to you again soon. Absolutely. Peace out. You, you got one in your pocket, the other holds my heart. We, we got a plan of a lifetime.
and I can't be here waiting.